Who will watch the Watchmen? Harmless phosphorescence! Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Harmless Phosphorescence. This is the show where we watch every theatrically released, full-length, live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, then we tell you all about it. This show is brought to you by our patrons. Patrons like executive producers Michael Beckwith and Atticus Burkett. You want to be a patron? You can do it. A buck a month's all you need to start with, and you get some extra podcasts. Head over to patreon.com slash harmless phosphorescence or harmless entertainment. Um, we've got lots of shows there. We've got uh, monthly movies where we do uh, a different movie every month that's not a superhero one. Uh, this month we'll be doing American Graffiti. So head over, check that out. Dollar a month is all it's you need to start with. Um, this is your host, Thoreau Smiley, and I am full of human bean juice. Who's joining me this week? I'm Josh Cece, and I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. I'm Brian Lesh, and I'm just here to eat the cold beans. I'm Alaric Weber, your only protection from yourselves. Uh, and this week on a harmless phosphorescence we are going to be watching 2008's the watchmen watchmen one of us died tonight somebody knows why somebody knows i heard he'd been working for the government Maybe it was a political killing. Maybe someone's picking off costumed heroes. John thinks that there's going to be a nuclear war. What if that's why someone wants us out of the way? So we can't do anything to stop it. An attack on one is an attack on all of us. Watchmen are over. What do you suggest we do about it? Retribution. We can save this world. Why would I save the world? I no longer have any stake in Do it for me. That's um, was a trailer for The Watchmen. Um, 2009's The Watchmen, I said 2008. Uh, released March 6th, 2009. The theatrical cut had a running time of 163 minutes. That's two hours and 43 minutes. It had a budget of $138 million. And it took in $185 million. So it Ooh. did not do well. Hmm. Squeaked by. Yeah. Well, and well, they say if you don't double your money on a movie, you, you lose money on it. So Right. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think, yeah, I think it was rough for the average moviegoer, especially two hours and 40 minutes. I think that turned a lot of people off for sure, that running time. Yeah, it was wild. That was the one on HBO because we were curious last week. So the one HBO had was the theatrical release. That was the. I, I thought it was like the unedited because it was so long. No, <laughs> that's what theater goers in two thousand nine saw. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. It uh, the the uh, director's cut um, is uh, three hours and six minutes long. So about an extra twenty some minutes. So That's he longer must have, than Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So he must have delved into the Black Freighter or something. That's because he pretty much yeah. tells the story. That's in this. that's what happened. Is is the black is uh they filmed all of the Black Freighter, and uh-huh. um they edited in they filmed it as like a separate thing, right? And then yes, th- I remember for that. the director's cut they edited it in as um part of the film. Because the kid and the newsstand guy they're in the series, but I feel like they only pop up at the end in this. Yeah, when yeah. they die, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just barely see them. Uh, yeah, because it's the kid who's reading the Black Friday. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that uh that uh did not do well um at the box office and uh makes me ask <laughs> the question, so, guys. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, throw, but how many I just want to guess or imagine how many times around the studio office who'll watch the Watchmen <laughs> <laughs> joke was made. <laughs> It's like apparently not very many. Well, I'm telling you this, not males between 18 and 22 years old. <laughs> and then they're high-fiving. Yeah. <laughs> While Zack Snyder sulks. He's like, screw you guys. I'm going to go make me a... <laughs> what did he make after this? Oh, you know what he followed this up with? Man of Steel? No. No, that was Brian Singer. Uh, like the Bridge to Terabithia movie, right? Not the Bridge to Terabithia. Um, the Guardians, the Owls of <laughs> Gothuli, whatever that was. 30 Rock made so many jokes about that movie. <laughs> uh, so, all right, guys, you ready to play the box office top 10? Always in, in my sleep. Here we go. This is the game where I will read the top 10 movies of the week of March 6, 2009. Uh, the guys here will try to uh, guess where Watchmen opened, and they will try to guess what movie I'm describing when I describe that movie using only the box office mojo description. Uh, that's a lie. I changed the descriptions a lot, but we won't get into that. Um, where do you guys think this opened? Um, Josh. Uh, let's see. Five. Josh goes five. Al, where do you go? Mm, two. Al goes two. <laughs> Brian, where do you also go to? I'm going to take a number three on this one. <laughs> <laughs> number three. <laughs> we've got a five, a three, and a two. Bob, <laughs> show us what we've got. <laughs> Those are some measurements. Yeah. Uh, in my eyes, you're all tens. So here we go. The box office top 10 coming in at number 10 this week. The two most popular guys in high school decide to ditch football camp for cheerleader camp for the girls and for the glory. I remember this movie. Was this on our last list last week? No, I don't believe it was. Sounded familiar. I don't know. I want to say it's like Cheer Squad or some shit like that. But. The tagline, according to this tiny little thumbnail, is two guys, 300 girls. You do the math. <clears throat> it's called uh, that was also made Spirit. by Zack Snyder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that six was, hours long. That was Justice League. Um, it's called Fired Up. Okay. It's called Stereotypes. Yes. <laughs> um, my there had. I'm assuming there had... Well... Maybe not. It might have been too young. I was thinking there had to have been an, a uh, Owen or Luke in it, but um, it was probably more like a, a Tatum. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, uh, coming in at number nine. <laughs> okay. Dunstan <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but no. Um, a 3D concert film. Of the 2008 concert tour, as well as documentary footage on this popular artist of 2009. Artist. Who was it? I I don't mean art, artist as in musical artist. It being a documentary of a concert. Oh, right. Oh, is this that Rolling Stones? Scorsese? I don't believe the Rolling Stones were a popular artist in 2009. <laughs> is this <laughs> exit through the gift shop about no. Banksy? No, no, it is not. Artist, no. I meant musical artists, guys. There's no actual oh. art involved. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I said artist be, instead of band because you didn't say band. I did. I said oh. a 3D concert film of the concert tour and documentary footage of this popular artist. 
Yes. Okay. I said me. the words concert uh, twice. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, one person can be in concert. I know, but uh, they're well, not going to be painting. <laughs> That's not a concert. I don't know. I'd pay to watch. <laughs> this Metallica. Is- Jonas the Brothers, month. the 3D concert experience. Wow. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was 2000, 2009. <laughs> it's all Jonas and Bieber. Um, coming in at number eight. A college grad lands a job as a financial journalist in New York City to support where she nurtures her shopping addiction and falls for a wealthy entrepreneur. What the fuck? Yeah, it starts off with a fairly empowered female character and then dips right away. Uh, Ill- illegally blonde. Like, <laughs> <laughs> technically blonde. Bleached blonde. Bleached blonde, ow. Uh, Romy, Wyoming. <laughs> Whoa. I, I like I it. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I want that movie on, <laughs> on my screen now. It's This one was called Confessions of a Shopaholic. Um, hmm. I look. I feel like I should know who that is on this. Like, she got her degree. She got a fantastic job in her field, but bitches be shopping. <laughs> they do, no matter what. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So this was starring uh, Isla Fisher. Oh, Kristen yep. Ritter and <laughs> Joan Cusack, oh. John Goodman. Wow, there's people in this movie. Um. So, at number eight, coming in at number seven. And I was a shopaholic, but for booze. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. uh, um, that'd be funny, though, if you were literally that. Like, you wouldn't drink it. You'd just buy it and then, like, throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> throw it on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Collect it. Like it gets better with age. I'm going to yeah. resell these in 30 like, years. Come on down to the hard seltzer cellar. <laughs> Uh, um, let's see an adventurous 11 year old girl finds another world that is a strangely idealized version of her frustrating home but it has sinister secrets this is based off a Neil Gaiman book oh is this Coraline it is Coraline yeah Yeah. yes Um, I love that movie yeah, that's a yeah, really good masterpiece. Movie. It's by the yeah. what's his face, dude? The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, yeah, the stop motion Par- guy, Norman, That dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. Uh, coming in at number six. Oh my god, this movie. This Balt. <laughs> okay, the description does not sound. Did not start how I was expecting. This Baltimore set movie of interconnecting story arcs deals with the challenges of reading or misreading human behavior. It is not The Wire. It's Crash, right? No. No. And it's not Hairspray because we did that already. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, they literally just described The Wire. <laughs> uh, no guesses. Yeah, if you hadn't said The Wire, I would have said The Wire. <laughs> yeah. This Baltimore set movie of interconnecting story arcs deals with the challenges of reading or misreading human behavior. <laughs> He's okay. just not that into you. Huh. Oh. Okay, what's the name? That's the name of it? Yeah, he's just not yeah. that into you. It was based off a book that some dude from Oprah wrote. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember this. Yeah. Um, some dude from Oprah. Some like the d- land of Oprah. <laughs> the land of Oprah. Yeah. He has her own kingdom. <laughs> the land of Oprah-tunity. Yeah. That's why, I, yeah, that's why she was unfazed during that interview. She's like, I'm more powerful than the queen. Yeah, basically. The queen. Yeah. Uh, Queen's got no liquidity. <laughs> Oprah, on the other hand. Yeah. Who who could the queen call in Hollywood and end their career? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, she can't even end her own uh, son-in-law's career. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, coming in at number five. When a shopping mall is taken over by a gang of organized crooks, it's up to a mild-mannered security guard to save the day. Oh, oh my God. Paul, Splart. Paul, 
Paul Blart, Mall Cop. The one, yeah. the only. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so the James. Segway got big, right? It's what? Yes. Yeah, this is where people first saw the Segway in action. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, the Segway. The all-important Segway. Uh, um... Maybe that's why it was called that, because if you're having a conversation with a person and someone rolls up on a Segway, it immediately has to turn to how lame that is. <laughs> we, um, when, um, when, uh, Moon and I had a, a pet shop in Milwaukee, um, uh-huh. we had a, there was a, our landlady was this, this woman <laughs> who was like terrorized the block. She'd like harass like the other tenants up and down the block and she'd roll up and down the street on a Segway like yelling at people. It was like <laughs> like the Wicked Witch like music playing but yeah. as she rolled by on her Segway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I would like to point out that Paul Blart Mall Cop made almost the exact same amount of money as as Watchmen. And I'm sure the budget was like a fraction of what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm sure it was like less than thirty million for sure. Well, Kevin James is the luckiest man in show business. Oh God, yeah, for real. I don't know what he's good for. Not funny, not good looking or charismatic. He's just Kevin. Leia Rimini <laughs> seems to like him, I guess. So mm. there's that. Like yeah, right. yeah, there is that. Um, all right, coming in at number four this week. A Mumbai teenager reflects on his life after being accused of cheating on a game show. Oh, yeah. He wants to be a gajillionaire. We got some... Slum dog. Yeah, we got some slum dog going down. Um, that, wow. Yeah, that's the most 2009 movie ever. Um, slum dog millionaire. Uh, coming in at number three. A retired CIA agent travels across Europe and relies on his old skills to save his estranged daughter, who has been kidnapped while on a trip to Paris. <laughs> taken two? No, Taken one. Taken one. Okay. The original Taken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taken two. Fool me once. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part of Taken is where he stumbles across the chosen one in a junk shop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's when he kidnaps the kid, right? Yes. Yeah. Taken is badass if you haven't seen it. Yeah. No. There's yeah, a, yeah, it's there's an incredible a, movie. There's a reason yeah. it was a hit. That Yeah. That movie is amazing. He's taken a lot of names in that one. Yeah. I have a particular set of skills. <laughs> I, you guys remember the, um, uh, when, uh, his uh, w- when he was auditioning with Warwick Davis, and uh, what, what was that show? Short <laughs> something short, shortcuts, short. Oh, life is short. Or, life. Yeah, life is short. I think. I don't know. That might be it. But, I know what you mean. but he's like, he's, he's like, I'm a very funny man. All right, listen, I'll improv. I've got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> like the David Brent. Yeah. Uh, so all right, number two. A mischievous grandma lands in jail where she meets a variety of mixed up characters. Big mama's big house. <laughs> oh my lord. You, I've got a I there's a lot of movies. There's a I've got to watch these. I have to after <laughs> After Fast and the Furious, this is a series which I know oh, nothing oh, the about. Medea movies. Medea goes to jail. Yeah, Medea. Did she made new Ernest? Right, Medea and <laughs> Ernest. Like she, yeah, she's the African American Ernest. Saving Christmas, going to jail. <laughs> right. Oh uh, my lord, Medea. Um, and number one this week in 1985, where former superheroes exist, the murder of a cop. <laughs> <laughs> they exist at 1985. Um, right, they formally do. That could be any time. Yeah. The murder of a colleague sends active vigilante Rorschach into his own sprawling investigation, uncovering something that could completely change the course of history as we know it. As we know it. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. Uh, it, it hit number one. Um, it made $107 million its opening week, which means... It uh, made the additional 180 or the additional 80 million dollars the rest of the time. 
I wonder how much money they lost out on because people were still asleep in their seats when the next uh, showing started. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, let's get pillows and blankets for everybody. I guess they're staying for another showing. I saw it opening weekend. You were with us, right, Al, when I saw it? I, I might have been. Uh, Olivia, I, Michael. Yeah, I think I saw this opening weekend, and I think I don't remember it because I was intoxicated. I uh, and asleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I saw it opening weekend with Rain. Um, I think he and I both might have dozed off a couple times. Yeah. Um. So Let's wake up to a blue guy. You know, like, where the fuck did he come from? <laughs> and his dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was about a week and a half, not even quite two weeks away from being diagnosed with Crohn's. So when I saw this, I had very little blood in my body. Oh, no. <laughs> but I watched it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, so, all right. That's our box office top 10. That brings us to our comic book and character background. Mr. Alaric Weber. Hello. It's your time to shine. All right. So, the uh, the Watchmen uh, was a well. It was uh, published by DC Comics from September of 1986 to October 1987. Written by Alan Squiffy Moore and drawn by Dave Gibbons, the series was collected in a single volume edition in late '87. That was when I got it. The story was used to reflect contemporary 1980s anxieties and to deconstruct and satirize the concept of the superhero in comics. Yeah, mission accomplished. It was pretty damn popular. um, And Watchmen was the only graphic novel recognized on Time Magazine's 2005 list of the 100 best novels. It's ranking... uh, Time Magazine's ranking of the best English language novels published since 1923. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for us now to understand how different this was from every other comic that was out in the 80s. Like, this was really, really different. Um, Like Al had had mentioned last week, Will Eisner is credited with creating it. But this this was the first one that um, made the term graphic novel mainstream. Yeah. I would think I, that's the first time I remember seeing also the dark Knight returns, but that was a, a straight up, but this was so separate that anyone could read it and be, be yeah. cool. Yeah. Read it in an afternoon stands alone. Well, and understand the universe, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, there's yeah. no references to Batman in the sixties or <laughs> Batman in the seventies. Um, speaking of, uh, our, uh, speaking of our, uh, universe history, um, sorry, it keeps telling me my connection's weird. Am, are, am I coming through? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're all good. We got you, Al. Okay, cool. So, um, the uh, the Minutemen was a group of adventurers formed in 1939 to pool the resources of individual heroes in the fight against crime. And um, so we we all read this, right? Yeah, yeah. all four of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna play a game. Uh, name a member of the men and what their power is. And we'll start with Thoreau. Uh, a member of the Minutemen? Mm-hmm. Yes. The the group that uh, was prominent in the 40s. Um, okay, so... Uh, wh- oh, oh, by the way, there are eight of them. Jeez. Um, all right, so I remember... Was it Moth Mothman? Yes. Or the yeah, Moth? Yeah, Mothman. Moth very Man. good. Um Mothman. Okay, so Did Mothman. Um, <laughs> you would you would hope. Uh, his uh, real name was Byron Lewis. He used special wings to glide in the air while battling crime. Um, we're going to hear maybe a little bit more about the uh, the house investigations. There was a um, the House Un American Activities yeah. Committee. M- McCarthy. Uh, yeah. So. Um, the, the pressure from these house investigations precipitated Mothman's alcoholism and mental health issues that eventually landed him in a sanatorium in New England. All right, Josh. Uh, his biggest problem was name- he would just run into lights. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Hooded Justice. Hooded Justice, very good. 
Uh, uh, I think his powers were, you know, skilled hand-to-hand combat and a bad attitude. Uh, yes, Hooded Justice, the first costumed vigilante, utilized sheer brutality in his fight against crime. <laughs> his identity was never revealed, though many conjectured he was a former circus strongman, Rolf Mueller. Hooded Justice vanished in 1952 when active mass vigilantes were forced to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee and reveal their true identities. Gotcha. All right, very good. Brian, name a, minute, name, name a member of the Minutemen. Josh took mine because I watched the HBO miniseries. Yeah. Um, uh, the Owl, the other Owl. <laughs> yeah, Night right. Owl, the original Night, Night Owl. Owl. Yes. He had the ability to, uh, I don't know, go. <laughs> is that a dove? I think that's a dove. <laughs> <laughs> he can go. Ka-ka! <laughs> He's an ka-chock, owl. Ka-chock, can make ka-chock, ka-chock, ka-chock. Have any of you ever seen a chicken? I have seen many chickens. Chicken man. That's his, uh, mm. his accomplice. Yeah, I don't know what the owl's power is. Uh, superhuman pellet pooping. Genius level intellect, <laughs> I would guess. Nice yeah. try. Okay, so uh, Night Owl, uh, <laughs> his real name was Hollis Mason. Uh, he was an average policeman inspired by an article on Hooded Justice to become Night Owl. Mason retired from hero work when Dr. Manhattan became a public mainstay. Uh, yeah, that was in the 60s. And uh, Mason opened a garage and eventually wrote a Minutemen tell all book under the hood. Uh-huh. All right. Back to Thoreau. <laughs> oh, um, so, Silk Spectre. Silk Spectre, yes. Um, Silk Spectre, uh, her name, she used to be, uh, she was born Sally Juspezik. Juspezik. Uh, she went by Sally Jupiter because um, she was trying to hide her Polish roots. She was a former waitress and burlesque dancer advised by her agent to become a crime fighter. Advised. That's you're, all it took. You're just not making it as a stripper. Maybe you should beat up some people. <laughs> uh, Josh. Yeah. Oh, right. Name another. Uh, yeah. Uh, dollar bill, right? Dollar bill. Yes. Dollar bill. Very good. Yeah, he can make uh, it right. <laughs> um, his real name was Bill Brady. He was originally a star college athlete from Kansas, was employed as an in-house superhero to a major national bank, which went unnamed. A security uh, guard, we call that. He was shot dead when his cape became entangled in a revolving door while trying to stop a bank robbery. That is pretty funny. Yeah, that's it is. some incredible level to, stuff. Yeah, we've talked about the impracticality of capes before. Yeah. Um, Brian, uh, Wednesday Adams, that one Gothic chick in the corner. Oh, uh, I yeah. don't know what her name that, is or what her power is. I assume that it's dark glares from the corner of the room. <laughs> it's gardening and hiking. All right. Uh, her name, uh, her code name was silhouette. Oh, uh, her real name was Ursula Zant. She was a Jewish Austrian immigrant who escaped the rise of Nazism in Germany. Always sought more meaningful in- exploits for the team, such as her exposure of a child pornography ring. She was expelled from the group in 1946 when it became public that she was a lesbian. She and her lover were killed six weeks later by the liquidator, a former adversary seeking revenge. Thoreau, we've got two more. Okay. Um, uh, um, the, 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 the beater upper. <laughs> oh yeah, Duh. yeah. Um, all right you're gonna pass through yeah. uh josh you, you right. got one shit let me think oh the comedian was yes there. oh yeah. damn it when you said the beater upper that's what i assumed you meant <laughs> yeah oh, he is. i can't believe he i forgot about the comedian up. we just watched oh. a three-hour movie about him right. oh. <laughs> he's always armed but he looks like he could you know hold his own in a fight Plus, he's got some little sneaky moves like we see in the movie where he throws the coffee cup as a distraction and shit. So yeah. he's pretty so, good at fighting. He does a great 10 minute set, also. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like airplane <laughs> food. He's, what happens to the other sock? 
Uh, real name, Edward Blake. He was the youngest member of the group, was 18 when he joined. Mm-hmm. He was basically a thug with a baseball bat. Um, and he <laughs> in his heart. Fought, no, he because then later, I'm sorry, but later on, uh, Harry Dean or Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a psychopath with a bat. Yeah, right. wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah, um, so the comedian fought crime for monetary gain, robbing the criminals he defeated in battle. Capital style. <laughs> he was expelled from the Minutemen after the attempted rape of Sally Jupiter. And his imagery and weaponry would change as he left the group and began employment with the United States government. And so these liberal superheroes were um, fine with that, but not a lesbian. No, they expelled him. Yeah, I know it's on the same level, essentially. <laughs> um, so that leaves us with uh, one final member of the Minutemen. Uh, this is uh, Brian. Uh, you get a guess and then it's anybody's game. Uh, slug man. No, nope. he is a human slug. Throw. <laughs> uh, Captain does it good. Oh, you were halfway there, ah, Josh. Uh, Captain C- Carnage. Uh, no, he comes up later. He was actually a quote unquote supervillain. Uh, oh, well, Captain Chaos. No, that was uh, <laughs> straight the tick. Them. Cap- uh, Cap- <laughs> Captain Kangaroo. Mm, right. um, Brian, one last guess, armed with the rank of the- Captain. Captain Salt Shaker, the human slug's arch nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Captain <Well>, Tennille? <laughs> no. Okay, it was Captain Metropolis. Oh. His real name was Nelson Gardner. He was yeah. a former Marine lieutenant. Um, Motivated by ending the social ills, such as promiscuity and anti-war protests. He envisioned Those were his social ills? <laughs> uh, he envisioned the Minutemen as modern patriots. And in fact, uh, Captain Metropolis, in 1966, he attempted to form a new costumed hero group, the Crime Busters. <laughs> the Yardbirds. Uh, the first and potentially last meeting of this group included the comedian and the second generation of heroes. Thoreau, name one of those heroes uh, that was almost in the Crime Busters. Uh, Rorschach. Yes. Real name, Walter Kovacs, a violent and ruthless vigilante driven by moral absolutism. He wears a special mask with shifting ink blots and is quite possibly homeless. Josh. <laughs> I'm new. <laughs> I got an A. <laughs> I'm gay. I'm new in town. All right. New so, in town. <laughs> no, is it like aggressively <laughs> homosexual? Isn't that how he describes himself? <laughs> Wait, Rorschach was gay? No, he was doing a Mulaney bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm supposed to guess one? Yeah. Yes. Um, Ozymandias? Ozymandias, yes. Uh, Adrian Veidt, a child prodigy, graduated high school and college before age 18. He gave away his family fortune after the death of his parents to see if he could be a success on his own. Uh, He became a costumed hero after the death of his business partner and love interest to a heroin overdose. Often cited as the smartest man in the world, Veidt is also depicted as the pinnacle of human physical ability. Brian. John Osterman. John Osterman, at that point known as Dr. Manhattan. He started off a nuclear physicist working at the Gila Flats test base in New Mexico. Osterman was vaporized after he became trapped in the test chamber of an intrinsic field generator. Learning to reconstitute himself over the next few months, he became a being of almost limitless power. His ability to perceive all moments of time simultaneously can be hindered by tachyons or a large magnitude electromagnetic pulse. Throw two to go. So they're me- they mirror um, obviously intentionally, but they mirror origins of well-known superheroes. You know, yeah. Ozzy's yeah. parents died. This guy's stuck in a chamber, like Banner. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. Um, do we have a Silk Specter too? Not yet. Ah, she was there. Plus, oh, I love the movie, The Muppets Take Dr. Manhattan. 
Um, yes, she was there. We had not mentioned her yet. Um, Laurel Jane Lori Juspejic, daughter of the original Silk Spectre, Sally Jupiter. Despite her lifelong desire to work with animals, Lori was pushed by her mother into the quote-unquote family business of crime fighting. And that leaves one more. Uh, Josh. Uh, the new Night Owl? Yes. Night Owl 2, as he was known. Dan. Uh, Dan Dryberg. He took up the mantle of Night Owl with the blessing of the original Hollis Mason. Utilized his massive inheritance and engineering know-how to build various crime-fighting gadgets and machines. And uh, one final note. Oh, the uh, the the crime busters uh, never really went anywhere. They every once in a while these these five would sort of team up. Captain Metropolis just kind of disappeared, um, but uh, they were never really a, a formal team. Mm -hmm. Um. Although they were depicted, uh, never was there a group of superheroes called the Watchmen. Oh, um, so yeah, it refers to the Doomsday Clock, right? Or and our Doctor Manhattan's clock, and uh, you know the uh, uh, the Watchmen on, Watchmen on the walls, kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Kennedy quote. Yeah, the Kennedy right, quote. Right. Yeah. Uh, one I final note uh, that uh, so that took place in '66. It was in 1977 that the Keen Act was passed, outlawing vigilantes operating outside government mandates. Um, it was pointed out to me by Brian that there was a sequel. There were also prequels uh, that came out after this movie. In 2012, DC published a series of comics called Before Watchmen. The larger series consisted of eight limited series. For the Minutemen, Silk Spectre, the Comedian, Night Owl, Ozymandias, Rorschach, Dr. Manhattan, and Moloch, as well as a dollar bill one shot for a total of 37 issues. Wow. Did I'm sorry, just uh, has anybody has any of us read the uh, sequel? Um, I don't know. No, no, I don't think so. I'm wondering how much of the series was based on the sequel. That's a good uh, point. From what I've read, none. Okay. Um, um, I've picked up, I haven't read it, but apparently some of the characters have been reintroduced into the actual DC universe in recent yeah. years, like recent, um, recent years, Dr. Manhattan yeah. and Superman have met. Yeah. The yes. B42 we're about to get to that thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, the actual sequel was called the doomsday clock and it was a 12 issue limited run published from 2017 to 2019 written by Jeff Johns and penciled by Gary Frank. It takes place seven years after the New York massacre, um, which was exposed as fraud by Rorschach's journal. Um, spoiler. <laughs> uh, it uh, places the Watchmen universe inside the DC multiverse with crossovers by Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and more. And the rest. And there was a, it was a, an interesting dichotomy between Superman and the Watchmen, uh, Superman being an alien who uh, personifies humanity and, um, you know, takes it as his own. And then this human who is no longer a human and no longer has any human concerns. Who's alienated from humanity. Yeah. So it's the difference between, you know, Superman and Nietzsche's Ubermensch. Dr. Mm. Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's yeah, it's it's like one is messy and one is neat and they have to live together in the same apartment. <laughs> well, one feels too much, the other feels not enough. Yeah. One is chocolate, one is peanut butter. Superman is a moody, emotional drama queen guy. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to get laid, man. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, I mean, he's Superman and he has a super penis. What's he going to do with it? Super sex. Uh, nobody <laughs> ever knows. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we got for comics history. All right. Well, thank you. That was fun. Yeah, that was. I liked that out. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> for bringing us this game. <laughs> um. All right. So then that brings us to. The oh, I'm I'm sorry. The larger point when I asked about what is their superpower, nobody has superpowers except Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, that's what right. I was going to say. Um, I, I 
yeah, I didn't actually get around to saying it, but all of their powers is just beating up people. How, right, yeah. However, it seems like in this movie, they have more than human strength, a lot of them. They do perform feats on screen that, you know, for all of like Zack Snyder's like realism. Yeah. They they like do things that are impossible for actual humans to do physically. Well, not to mention the mask with ink blots that continue to shift. Yeah, right. that was one of my unanswered questions. How does that yeah. work? And How much money does that mask cost to maintain? <laughs> yeah, who makes it? Good point. Um, it was a fabric that came out in the, the 60s. Uh, it was two sheets of latex um, with liquid in between. Um, oh, like uh, Harry, whatever, like those doodle? Yeah, that, yeah, the magnet. Yeah, uh, the magnetic like an Etch-a-Sketch? Doodle. No. Do you remember the like Harry the head? Oh, or something? those ones. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could draw a mustache on them. them. Yeah. Well, Same yeah. Technology. That was uh, magnets. Um, right. But it was between two layers of plastic. Yeah. Uh, like that. Uh, Walter Kovacs, uh, Rorschach, he used to work in a dress shop and there was like uh, a special. Um, a special dress that was commissioned and then the woman, she hated it. It was made out of this fabric. The um, woman hated it. So he took this dress and made his, uh, uh, made his mask out of it. It would have uh, been funny if she loved it. And then she's just walking around New York with the Rorschach <laughs> mask dress. Yeah. And it was, uh, um, heat sensitive, kind of like, uh, what was that stuff called? Hyper color, hyper color, hyper color. <laughs> yep. It was heat sensitive, but it was just black and white. It was, so it's like a mood ring. Hyper black and white. Have, have hyper you, noir. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen, there is actually someone did make an actual Rorschach mask that works recently. It's basically just fancy next, next generation hyper color. Cause as you breathe, it heats it up and it turns dark. And then, you know, that, oh, yeah. so it actually huh. does exist now in 2021, but it still doesn't, it's still not exactly like Rorschach. It's not like all over. It's just kind of like the same pattern, slightly different over and over as you breathe in it. Uh huh. But um, all right. So that brings us to the film itself. Um, the Watchmen on the big screen. Uh, it was originally acquired by uh, Lawrence Gordon and Joel Silver in 1986. They were going to make Joel it. Silver. Yeah, cool. Mr. Joel Silver, who makes everything. Um, I mean, God, what do you start with? Like the Warriors, Weird Science, Commando, Jumpin' Jack, Flash. Joel, Joel Silver, producer extraordinaire. Um, yeah. Um, by uh, it was a 20th Century Fox that bought it um, through them. Um, Alan Moore refused to write the screenplay, <laughs> and, as he has to this day, refused to have anything to do with adapting it. So they enlisted Sam Hamm, who wrote uh, Batman 89. Um, they wanted him to make it more manageable for the screen. So he decided that the ending should be rewritten to involve an uh, assassination plot and a time paradox. <laughs> um, <laughs> that did not get made. Um, it was kind of just in pre- in a pre-production through 91. Um, then it got sold to Warner Brothers, where Terry Gilliam was brought on. Terry mm. Gilliam was supposed to uh, direct it, um, and it was going to be written by his writing partner, uh, Charles McCowan. Um, they were only able to raise $25 million for the film, um, which is not, was not enough. They estimated they needed $100 million in 1991 money wow. to make it. Um, I'm kind of glad he didn't. Yeah, I think it would have... I don't think he was the right filmmaker for it. It would have been... I think it would have been a glorious disaster. Um, yeah. Um, he described it as unfilmable when he left it. Um, it kind of got put on the shelf then until 2001 um, when it got sent to Universal. Um, at that point, um, Lawrence Gordon uh, partnered with Lloyd Levin, who is a, a producer. Also, um, and they brought in um, David Hayter to write and direct. David Hayter um, did the X-Men. He was a writer for the X-Men, X-Men 2. Um, he, uh, it's, it's really weird because he's, he's best known as the voice actor for Solid Snake on Metal Gear. 
So, wow. yes, I don't, of course. it's so weird that he also has this like side writing career, but he's mostly known as snake. Um, but, uh, he was going to write and direct it. Uh, the, uh, that fell through creative differences. Um, then they, uh, brought it to revolution studios. Um, that fell apart. Then they brought it to Paramount where it was supposed to be a Michael Bay film. Uh, hmm. Again, no, for a different reason, but no. Yeah, no. Uh, Michael Bay, um, it never happened for whatever reason. And they, we know what reason. He's all, I feel like transforming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, around this time, it probably would have been Bad Boys 2 and, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, who knows? Or Miami Vice. Yeah, I think oh, that was still, Michael Mann. Yeah. Um, so uh, then at that point, Darren Aronofsky was brought on board. Uh, Getting better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aronofsky, uh, of course, Requiem for a Dream, The Fountain, Black Swan. Um, he worked on it for about a year or so and then left. Um, at that point, Paul Greengrass got brought on. <laughs> Paul Greengrass. The? Um, what's that? The the Paul Greengrass, who's known as the born the born dude, he directed all the born movies. <laughs> Everyone was born. Oh, yeah. oh, the born movie. born. Yeah, the born identity, born supremacy, the <laughs> born things again. Yeah, <laughs> born in born to the new batch. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the habit. Um. So, uh, yeah. So ultimately. He couldn't get it off the ground either. Nobody at uh, Universal was happy with, or I'm sorry, at this point it was at Paramount, was happy with with the shape of the script or anybody's vision for it. Um, and now it's at 2005. They bring in Tim Burton. Uh, the ringer. Yeah. Tim Burton uh, decides not to do it. However, um, Warner Brothers... Um, gets their hands back on it. And after the success of 300, they bring on Mr. Zack Snyder. And that's the point where the film actually starts going into production. Zack Snyder. Um, director. He started out directing um, commercials. He did a lot of uh, beer and uh, car commercials in the 90s. Um, <laughs> were they heavy handed? <laughs> yeah. Well, and he also directed the music video for somebody to shove by soul asylum. Oh, I like that song. Yeah. Yeah. I like soul asylum. They're kind of underrated. Um, cool. so, uh, yeah. Um, th- he got to start as a commercial director and a, uh, music video director. We see a lot of that on this show. Um, and then he got his big break uh, with his feature in 2004, Dawn of the Dead. Um, I love that movie. That's a great movie. That is a that's great the first time movie. we saw Fast Zombies. Do you remember how shocking it was? That was wait, wait. Was that was that before 28 Days Later? Yes. Oh, because I thought 28 yes. Days Later was the first time we saw Fast Zombies. That may be true. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one came first. I swore it was on the dead, but yeah, that was a really well-made movie all around. It was, remake. and it was set in Milwaukee, which is funny because after I lived in Milwaukee rewatching it, I'm like, hey, that's Chicago. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, Yeah, so uh, 28 Days Later was 2002, and Dawn of the uh, Dead was 2004. Uh, all right, so then you're right, yeah. Um, so yeah, he got, I mean, he basically just, just got hired for jobs after that. After that, he got 300, and 300 was a huge hit, of course, as we all know. Um, that was kind of his breakout even more than Dawn of the Dead. And then, um, then Watchmen, um, he'd follow up Watchmen with Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahuli. <laughs> you think you can just fly through the air like the Owls of Legend? <laughs> that is a directing credit. It wasn't one of those weird ones where he gets like a producer, like brought to you. No, the man right. directed that movie. Or a Garfield situation. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. just confused, and next thing you know, he signed a contract. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we will, of course, see him again um, soon. Well, in, a, in eh, probably a couple months. Uh, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, 
And of course, eventually, someday on this show, the Snyder Cut <laughs> of Justice League, which which comes out in four days, five days, five days? Four, days. Four, days. four or yeah. five days. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it might have to be the one where we. Oh, shit. Never mind. OK, well, since we do theatrical releases, we'll have to watch the the one that was released in theaters. Right? Well, no, no, we're doing that one. Absolutely. Because that was in theaters. And what was what it? 17, 18, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, well, so if we do the Snyder released. Cut, we can just talk about things that are new. That, I think it's getting a short release in theaters, too, right? I believe it is. Um, well, yeah. we, oh, well we, we, we were discussing with 2020 um, and the complete collapse of the theater industry, how are we are going to do this going forward. Um, and we thought possibly for 2020 and 2021 movies, we would, assuming the, the film industry goes back to theaters and, as normal, um, mm-hmm. I was saying that, um, that uh, AAA releases um, that didn't make it into theaters might um, get into our list for these two years. That makes sense. But um, so um, anyways, um, Zack Snyder. Um, so I kind of looked into his background because I was trying to k- kind of figure this dude out because I don't really get him and his filmmaking aesthetic. Like, mm-hmm. I know there's people that love him and he's like right up their alley, but I'm not one of those people. Um, I was trying Same to figure here. out where he was coming from thematically. He was he was raised a Christian scientist. Um, I couldn't really find much of anything in that that. I thought connected to his body of work. Um, other than that, he just seemed to be just a dude. He just seems to be like just you ran like just just a, just a guy. Nothing so weird in his background. Did he, break, did he break in via writing or no? No, I directing mean, you said commercials. He, you said commercials, but how did he even? You he, know? he went to film school and then That's made made contacts in film school and started getting jobs. You know, he started. Um, he, he got jobs on set where he'd be like best boy and stuff and worked his way up and then got jobs directing commercials. Just, he worked up through the industry. Nothing right. really special no, no, about the dude as far no, as no spotted at a bar mitzvah. Yeah. Nothing like that. So, you know, um, this movie was written by David Hader, who I, uh, as I mentioned, his, his draft made it largely into this. That's a solid snake. Um, he also wrote the first two X-Men and, um, Alex, uh, Alex uh, Say, um, who uh, is uh, Snyder's, well, no, he doesn't work with Snyder too much. I thought he was Snyder's go-to guy, but he's not. Um, let's see. He wrote Sucker Free City, the 2018 Superfly, oh, and is a, an executive producer on the 2019 TV series Wu-Tang and American Saga. Oh, far out. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, this is like his biggest uh, writing credit for, this is like his biggest credit period, basically, is is uh, writing, writing credit on Watchmen. Um, the cat. I didn't have problems with the script. No, it was about as good as a Watchmen script as a single feature film could be. Well, a lot of it was Alan Moore's, uh, yeah. Yes, a lot of it came directly from the pages. Uh, dialogue wise i did my final watch last night with my trusty graphic novel by my side uh-huh. and uh was able to follow along with most of the dialogue throughout this was an extremely faithful adaptation and, and it works with, with one major obvious difference at the end right yep um but uh it um yeah it's yeah the graphic novel is basically their storyboard. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, the our cast. Uh, we've got uh, Malin Ackerman as uh, Lori Jupiter, Silk Spectre two. Um, she's a Swedish American actress. She was born in Stockholm. Um. Let's see. She got a big break in the Utopian Society in 2003. She was in Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Um, she has a non-speaking role in Old School, but nobody forgets it. She's in the Jello wrestling or the oh, Baby Oil wrestling or whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. She's in a movie called Wanderlust. A David Way movie. She's very funny. That's in a that. good movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, she's in 27 Dresses. Um, Rock of Ages. Uh, 
2018's Rampage. Um, uh-huh. She's been in the uh, series Billions for uh, for a little while. Um, mm. So uh, she did the voice of Black Widow, Black Widow, in uh, an episode of Robot Chicken. Oh, cool. Oh. And obviously, these people were not unknowns, but I'm I'm glad they went low key on the casting. They did because can't you hear some unimaginative exec being like Tom Cruise for Ozymandias? It'll be perfect, you know, oh, God, shit like yeah. that. Well, okay, yeah. So yeah, for, so in earlier attempts to make the movie, um, this role was um, names floated for this role were Hillary Swank, Natalie Portman, Rachel Weisz, um, Jessica Alba. Um, Oof. yeah. So, ugh. um, Billy Crudup as Dr. Manhattan slash John Osterman, Billy Crudup, of course, best known, um, for, uh, almost famous. Yeah. I like him. Me too. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's kind of underrated. Uh, he was in big. Jesus Sun is a really neat movie. That's oh, under the radar. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, he was in uh, Everyone Says I Love You. <laughs> um, that was kind of one of his first films, uh, Inventing the Abbots. Um, let's see, Big Fish, uh, Mission Impossible 3, The Good Shepherd, um, Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> oh, Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, and uh, since that, let's see, he was in Spotlight in 2015. Um, oh, he was in the Justice League in 2017 as Dr. Henry Allen. Yeah. He was also oh, an yeah. alien covenant as the strangely religious XO of the ship. It was weird. Um, let's see. Uh, Matthew Good played Ozymandias, Adrian Veidt. Um Let's see. He was his breakthrough role was Chasing Liberty in 2004. Um, he was in Match Point in 2005. That's a Woody Allen movie. Um, the romantic comedy Leap Year. Oh my God. <laughs> Where they, yeah, all right, that movie. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, let's see, he's been in The Good Wife, Downton Abbey, The Crown. He seems to do a lot of like, uh, Fancy British guy rolls. Yeah, period pieces. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got Rorschach, Walter Kovacs, Jackie Earl Haley. Um, okay, this was an inspired move. Yeah. Yeah. He had not been on the scene. <laughs> he had not been on the scene. No. But he looks exactly like Dave Gibbons' depiction. Oh, God. Yeah, he does. Well, okay. Yeah. So um, he was best known... Um, in his early career, um, as one of the Bad News Bears, mm-hmm. he was in uh, several Bad News Bears movies. Uh, then, um, let's see, he was in Breaking Away in seventy okay. in seventy nine. That's a bicycling movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, got and then like a bunch of not good movies, The Zoo Gang. Doll Man, Nemesis, Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. Um, <laughs> the Quiet Maniac. And then from 1993 until 2006, he did not work. Hmm. Um, in 2000- he just got on his dirt bike and rode away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he was in a couple movies that year. Uh, all or Little Children. Um, all the King's men. Um, and then in 2008, he was in semi pro and then he got Watchmen. Um, didn't Spielberg use him around that time? Not, oh, he was in shutter Island. Oh, maybe that's it. Scorsese. Oh, he was in Lincoln in 2012. Right. Um, he also played Freddy Krueger in the 2010 remake of nightmare on Elm street. Mm hmm. Uh, since then, he was in RoboCop, the RoboCop remake. Oh my God, <laughs> the Dark Tower, the oh. the the hour and a half movie that they adapted seven thousand page books into. <laughs> um, it was terrible. It was so. Sad. I refuse to even watch it. That's I'm a, I I really like sure. the Dark Tower series and that that yeah. movie. No, 
Um, and then uh, his most recent, most recently, he's been in Alita Bat- Battle Angel. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. He's got uh, some more comic books, comic book cred. Um, recently, 2016, he was in the first episode, uh, the first season of Preacher. Oh. As Odin Kincannon. Oh. Um, and he was in 12 episodes of The Tick as the Terror. And he was amazing. I bet. Uh, cool. Let's see. Uh, Patrick Wilson played uh, Daniel Dryberg, Night Owl 2, um, in earlier. Well, okay. Well, so Patrick Wilson, um, he got a start on Broadway. Um, then he was in uh, The Full Monty. Um, hmm. Angels in America. Uh, let's see the 2004 Santa Fe. Oh, he was the dude from Hard Candy. Yes, that's right. Insidious. Um, The Conjuring. Oh, wow, he did a bunch of those those 2010s horror movies. Um, I like him. Yeah, Annabelle. Like a bunch of those. He killed it on Fargo season two. Oh yeah. Oh, he was in the A Team remake. Um, young adult. Um, uh, Space Station seventy six. I have not heard of that movie. <laughs> um, or, or the awful. first seventy five Space Station. <laughs> yeah. Um, he played President of the United States in Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. <laughs> and um, let's see. This he'll year, be an Aquaman. Oh yeah. <laughs> Aquaman as Orm Marius or the Ocean Master. Um, this coming this year, uh, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. <laughs> oh, he was in all The Conjurings. Yeah. Which the first one is pretty good. I haven't seen a Conjuring movie. It's all right. Um, let's see. So uh, this role in earlier... Days was uh, offered up to Kevin Costner, Christopher Walken, Richard Gere, um, That's what I was talking and about. John Cusack. That's exactly what I was talking about mm-hmm. with the Tom Cruise shit. Yep. Yeah. Um, Carla Gugino as uh, the as the original Silk Spectre. Um, she was in Troop Beverly Hills, This Boy's Life, The Spy Kids trilogy. <laughs> Somebody had to. <laughs> uh, Night at the Museum. A lot of kids stuff these days. Um, Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah. Huh. I think she's cute. I always liked seeing her pop up. Yeah. She, she's a good actor. Earlier attempts to make the film, this uh, role was offered to Liv Tyler, Jamie Lee Curtis, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Sigourney Weaver. Um, <laughs> yes. Let's see former stripper and burlesque dancer Sigourney Weaver. Right. <laughs> not saying she can't. I'm not saying she can't. Yeah. But. And then, of course, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Edward Blake, the comedian. Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, Supernatural. He's well known for. <laughs> Supernatural. Uh, charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, uh, the, uh, the Walking Dead. He played Negan. That's the season I bowed out of. And I was like, I just can't Damn. do this anymore. Yeah, so when brutal. they beat Carl to death, I was like, "All right, man." <laughs> yeah. Well, and even that, and I was like, "This show's never going to go anywhere. They're no. never going to get anywhere." The central problem never changes. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is I the first season of that series was so so good. good. It was one of the best seasons first of doing, television. The second yeah. one, I was oh, I I I felt there's a pretty big quality drop off in the second season. But um, I'd agree, but yeah, it still was all right. But um, after four, five seasons, I was like, "This, they're never getting anywhere. Nothing's ever mm-hmm. going to happen on this show, ever." Mm-hmm. And with Negan, yeah, it got to the point where zombies were no longer even the issue. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. He was also, my God, his film career <laughs> up in. This film grew up to watch him and it's crazy. Uh, Uncaged, Undercover Heat, Legal Deceit, Roadkill, Something More, Dead and Breakfast, Chasing Ghosts, Fred Claus. 
is a saying word. He's very he's very dashing. He has that Bruce Campbell kind of thing. Like, yeah, hasn't been used enough, but oh, cuts a good profile. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. We will see him as Thomas Wayne and Batman v Superman Donna Justice. <laughs> see, I think right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this year he's got two <laughs> movies coming out: The Unholy and The Integrity of Joseph Chambers. The Is Jonah Hex on our list? Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll see him in that as well. Coming up pretty soon. You woohoo! Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. Um, oh, God, there's so many people in this damn movie. Um, let's see. I'm just going to kind of run through the rest. Yeah, Stephen McCaddy is Holland Mason, Holland, Hollis Mason, Night Owl 1, Dan Payne as Dollar Bill, <laughs> Niall Matter as Mothman, Apollonia Vanova as Silhouette, Glenn Ennis as Hooded Justice. Daryl Sheeler as Captain Metropolis. Then we had Matt Frewer as Moloch. Matt Frewer, a.k.a. the dude that accosted Supergirl. Yeah, sexual assault. Yeah. Number uh, one. And I thought that was another inspired casting choice. Matt Frewer I agree. was great, yeah. And possibly a nod to that tiny cameo, you know. Zach loves DC, and he loves Superman, so who knows? Yes. Um, let's see. Laura Menel as Jan- Janie Slater. Oh, he also had uh, Matt Frewer in Dawn of the Dead. Yes, he oh, did. Oh, yeah. Huh. Um, Danny Woodburn as a uh, big figure. Um, <laughs> that was, oh my that God. Was, that was Kramer's buddy, right? Yeah, Mickey. Yeah. And they would get mad at each other all the time and they would <laughs> fight and it would just be hilarious how Mickey would get this ginormous Kramer to the ground dude. every time because that dude is so tall so tall <laughs> uh, let's see uh, Robert Wisden as Richard Nixon Frank Novak as Henry Kissinger I was thinking of a turtle Mr. Uh, President so the Kissinger casting was fine that Nixon was terrible oh god that Nixon was so yeah. prosthetic looking yeah didn't even try to do a voice it was just that guy yeah um let's see uh michael Pat buchanan a- yeah pat that, does it. that was another well, one and mclaughlin M- M- mclaughlin yeah. Yeah. i just I, every time i see someone do mclaughlin i just think of dana carvey's mclaughlin dana carvey's- <laughs> jimmy <laughs> john johnny john 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 jojo what do you have for breakfast uh, cornflakes wrong <laughs> <laughs> and we got uh, lee iacocca lee yeah. iacocca got murdered <laughs> Right. But yes. You think 1985, you know, like, um, those with the stars. Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, pretty much all of our production there. Um, I have a few Rotten Tomatoes uh, reviews. <laughs> um, the one and only <laughs> critic review I have, not an audience review, is uh, Matt Singer. And he wrote, the only way to truly adhere to Alan Moore's v- vision of The Watchmen would be to not make the movie in the first place. Hot take, dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are not wrong. Snyder Burgers. <laughs> Snyder Burgers. Sni- <laughs> Snyder Dogs. Yeah, that's better. Um, Peter, <laughs> Peter W. writes, there are two types of comic book movie fans. Those that appreciate a beautifully crafted story and visuals. Dark Knight, Batman Begins, Iron Man, V for Vendetta, Winter Soldier, And those that think your run-of-the-mill MCU movie is amazing, except the Russo Brothers films, those are amazing. (laughs) Yeah, the second person is not a comic book fan. If you're you're in the first group, this movie will blow your mind because it's an unappreciated masterpiece. Every time I watch it, I catch something new. If you're in the second group, this movie isn't for you. It's long and complicated and will likely bore you or make your head hurt with its complexity. In short, it's beyond your ability to appreciate. So just move, Whoa. So just move along and watch Ant-Man. He shrinks, lol. <laughs> that took a quick left turn. Wow. Yeah. Um, Kaylee A. writes... Oh, that was uh, five stars, by the way. Kaylee A. writes... This is one of the most well-written shows ever. It's beautifully done. <laughs> Regina King is incredible. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the show, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> five stars. She's uh, the kind of person who liked the Ferris Bueller TV show more than the <laughs> <laughs> movie. She's the kind of person. Wait, that's a thing. She's the kind of person oh, yeah. who, who clicked the wrong thumbnail on <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> you know. She bought the yeah. tiny chair on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thought it was a, uh, yeah, it was a show. Jennifer Aniston was on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she played the sister. Yeah. Um, Weird. Yeah. The Jennifer Grey role. So, all right. So, Tim, <laughs> just Tim writes, more, <laughs> more boring woke nonsense. Going as far as to appropriate real historical events to elicit outrage. <laughs> <laughs> he read Wait. too deep in the wrong pool. This dude yeah. does not he know what this, Alan this woke. Yeah. Nonsense. <laughs> yes, this yeah. dude does not know what uh, Alan Moore is about. Right, because the ultimate liberal utopia includes Richard Nixon and his open-ended presidential terms. Right. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, very woke. I have a feeling though that that is in response also to the uh television show. To the series, yeah, I think yeah. so. Because oh, that's yeah. We unlikely. know that justice. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because yeah, I'm confused by him thinking that any of this is woke, right? So the series was yeah. There, yeah. but it, so that's his point. The series they were taking down the clan, and that's just too much for Tim. Yeah, yeah. Tim doesn't like that. It's like the clan doesn't exist anymore. What are you talking about? Robert Redford's <laughs> been president for decades. Decades. <laughs> uh, and anonymous writes. I thought this movie was about men who invented watches. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> however, Tell us your name, you coward. <laughs> however, I had to leave the theater after like 20 minutes because my mom called me for Purim. Happy Purim, everybody. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's the best review ever. Yeah, that's chaos. I, I love it when it's like the Joker wrote this review. <laughs> He's got bees in the brain. Oh, He's afraid to tell us his name. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So, him and Roger Ebert. Guys, are you ready to jump into this thing? Ready for hours of entertainment. It's all a joke. I feel fear for the last time. Oh. <laughs> Put me in that chamber. Let me vaporize. Good for you. Uh, here it is, everybody. The Watchmen. We open on yellow, <laughs> yellow, 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 uh, Paramount logo, yellow stuff. Um, and the iconic yeah. happy face button. We meet. Um, real quick. Sorry. This is a really, uh, he's not the first obviously or last, but he, he did a lot of exposition in these titles. A lot, a lot, almost the whole history. Al brought up with the previous groups. Right. And, I wish it was not a Bob Dylan song. Right. Well, we'll get to that first. We have the entire first scene before we get to the titles, though. Oh, you're right. The comedian scene is before yeah, that. Yeah, we open on the happy face button. I apologize. And we have we meet the comedian. He's drinking tea. He's watching the McLaughlin group. Um, we find out that Nixon's still president. We get all of the background of the, the world and the uh, TV. Um, there's high tensions with the Soviets. They're going to invade Afghanistan. Uh, we find out that um, the nuclear deterrent that America has is Dr. Manhattan. Um, an intruder whose face we don't see breaks into the man's apartment. They have a big fight. The man, um, the comedian is beaten and thrown out the window. He falls to the ground below and is dead. Um, I, th- I mean, this movie is good. Like, like all of this is good stuff. I think it's so. cool. It's a really cool sequence. Yeah. Um, this suits Zack Snyder's. I think this is his best superhero movie. Like, I don't. Oh, yeah. I Same think, here. I think without question. It's. I kept having to ask myself, this is all really good. Why am I so bored? Because it was so true to a, a novel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really was. Like, there, I don't really have anything to complain about. It was all very well done. I just, I kept finding my mind drifting and being like, yep, that's a beautifully framed scene that perfectly captures the graphic novel. Well, and, and I'll just say this before we get too deep into the movie. Watch it comparing this to 300. Oh. Which yeah. is big framed shots of a fuck ton of action, whereas these are just big framed shots of 
like the beginning huh. scene is amazing. It's action, yeah. action packed. But like ninety percent right. of this movie is exposition and yeah. In conversation. Yeah. Yes. Very and like obviously in the comics. Yeah. And voiceovers. Yeah. And, and you don't notice it when you're reading a comic book because yeah. you know. But yeah, there's a lot of two people sitting across from a table talking well, to each other. Yeah. Well, and I think that's of showing. That's the thing too. Is I I really feel like this kind of story lends itself much better to to a series than yeah. it does to a feature film because a feature film okay so a series sure it's it could be all it can be 90 percent talking and flashbacks and this kind of stuff but it's in like 45 minute increments and you're at home right. and you can get up and go to the bathroom um, right yeah yeah i'm not saying snyder could have avoided that no so. i mean i, I no, think there are ways to avoid that like i i'm looking at the the way that they shot stuff there could have been moments of them shooting, like editing could have been done a little bit differently to yeah. make for a more interesting, like a la Breaking Bad, where you show a exacto knife multiple times, making right. that pointless thing interesting mm-hmm. until it happens. I, I don't know exactly how I would have fixed it, but I, I could see editing being a place to really, really save the pacing of the way the movie looks on screen. Well, he definitely decided to go for a very deliberate, older pace of film like yeah. very very slow like like rolling forward kind of thing leaned into the mystery a lot and yeah cin- cinematography uh, the cinematography didn't really lend itself to that as much it was just big big pictures it, it looked like a graphic novel yeah right. it did yeah. And but it, it's a movie it looked beautiful you know? it did look beautiful too and so yeah I don't know. Well, and there's no way you could sell any of these characters short. Do you know what I mean? There's no yeah. way you could chop their arc down. It's not like an X-Men movie where it's like miscellaneous mutants. I don't <laughs> need to know about that mutant, but they're there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. there's no way he could have like chopped off Dr. Manhattan's storyline or even I, I guess the smallest would have been Night Owls. Um, but yeah, there's no way you yeah. could just cut these characters up. Yeah, no, no, you there really isn't. And he, there was just a lot. He had a lot to get through. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and like Brian was saying, yeah, everything was, was framed like, like a big, a big panel from a, like, yeah. like a splash page. Every shot was a splash page. In yeah. reference to the credit sequence, which were, about Almost to get into, yeah. Um, <laughs> look, God they, damn it. They threw in a lot of the story into the credit sequence and trimmed a lot. A lot of this was yeah. actually the best uh, instance of show don't tell, right? Because um, they yep, went through basically the entire history of the Minutemen uh, in the course of a Bob Dylan song. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was pre- pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. that is a really good use of time. I thought too. Yes, exactly. It's pragmatic and it's frugal. Yeah, but for yeah, a I, guy who makes four <laughs> hour long yeah. cuts. Yeah. After having to rewatch this movie last night because I fell asleep at the beginning of the third act, I was like, God, I've seen this movie so many times and I still can't stay awake through it. It, it just felt like the editing shots within the scenes could have moved well, differently. He w- but that's the thing, though, is he will literally just linger on like a slow push in of something with no dialogue. So, yeah. yes, yes, he was kind of he was like really, really bringing shortening it as much as he could while at the same time really really keeping the pace slow yeah yeah Wait, are we criticizing someone for lingering on a point yeah <laughs> this horse demands to be beaten um all right slow so man. so we get to the opening credits well, and as far as the graphic novel, because we brought it up before as a uh, as a negative, but he did it and it was super subtle. It wasn't like Ang Lee or even Frank Miller last week where it's just like, okay, we get it. It's yeah. a box. It's a panel. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone could have done a better job making this into a single feature film. I just think the material I, yeah. is what it is. I don't, I don't think, think so any. either. I just think that, yeah, there are places that's where I would improve to make this movie feel faster. Yeah. Yeah. Or more sense. interesting. Yeah. Um, but that, that's not, yeah. And, and I don't want to malign, um, the cinematography or anything. It, it looked beautiful. Yeah. The whole thing it's looked beautiful. Incredibly 
beautiful movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right, we, let's see. Um, we get images of the Watchmen story throughout the decades, the Minutemen, all of them to the tune of the times they are changing. Um, <laughs> Not the tune. Well, yeah, two times. You, you have to hear his voice. I don't know. I mean, it. it that's, a, that's a choice. It's a bold, interesting choice to choose one of Bob Dylan's most iconic songs. And yeah. to have him do it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and to play it in its entirety, right? That's yeah, every verse of the song. Yeah, the, yeah. The uh, yeah, yeah. The, I imagine that the uh, the music rights budget for this film was humongous. It had to be. Yeah, we were talking about the musical cues, and we'll get to some of that. But Al and I were talking about that, and they are some of them are directly from the comic book, which is really, right. really, really neat. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Then we go back after the credit sequence uh, to uh, Eddie's apartment. We discover who he is. There's two detectives discussing whether or not he was a government operative. Then we get Rorschach. Uh, we get <laughs> Rorschach's fucking voice over this dude. This 4chan QAnon incel yeah. dude. <laughs> An abattoir filled with... Yeah, Tack- I mean, the character was very, very much modeled after um, what's his face from Taxi Driver, right? I mean, with the voiceover, oh, Travis Bickle. Travis Bic- I mean, he's basically yes. Travis Bickle. It's like the same kind of like narration, um, same well, kind of incel thing, minus the sexual aspects right. of it. Yeah, and and someone who obviously isn't that bright or educated, trying to sound smart. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's no well, need to use the word and, abattoir. And super, yeah. super melodramatic too. Just like they turn to me for for <laughs> for their salvation and I say no. Like just right. so melodramatic and over the He's top. like, this city's whores. Like, whoa, dude, chill the fuck out, man. Yeah. What are you doing right now? Tell us the more about what you're doing. Provides. Snowball. <laughs> the city provides. <laughs> You'll never find snow like this in the mountains. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Rorschach is investigating the scene after the cops leave. He finds the man's secret superhero closet. Daniel's, or um, not Daniel, uh, Eddie's superhero closet. Um, then we cut to a house where an old man regales a younger man with tales of his superhero youth. It's the two night owls. Uh, younger Night Owl is Daniel. <laughs> we uh, find out that Nixon outlawed superheroes in the seventies. Um, so now nah, I'll leave it for unanswered questions. All right, so um, <laughs> Daniel goes home. He finds Rorschach there. Rorschach tells him about Eddie being dead. Tells him he thinks there's a killer on the loose targeting ex superheroes. We discover they used to be partners, and we see Daniel's cool underground superhero lair. Um, Rorschach and Daniel must have been a real interesting pairing. Yeah. Because <laughs> Daniel's like the most goobery, man- mild-mannered dude, <laughs> and Rorschach yeah. is Rorschach. I was trying to think of a, a comic duo that it related to, but I couldn't quite come up with it. I guess anyone and Wolverine, but yeah, just so yeah. salty and so not at all. Yeah. Um. So uh, Daniel goes to visit billionaire Adrian Veidt, who uh, went public as a sup- as the superhero Ozymandias. Jump in now. Did you have something? Um, I w- I was going to say that it's uh, with uh, Rorschach and um, Night Owl. They're almost two sides of Batman. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Wow. Yeah, but, yeah, that's that um, is true. Like the, the the gadget guy and the hyper brutal <laughs> detective. Yeah. Well, the guy who's seen the darkest side. <clears throat> yeah, and and is over principled. You know, he oh, does yeah. not bend whatsoever. The Re- cha- chaotic Jesus. good. Yeah. Yeah. Side of him <laughs> versus neutral neutral. Right. The uh, the night that's owl Superman. He's like, oh, I don't know, man, you know, whatever, uh, whatever the government tells me to do. You know, you like my glasses. Dude. Yeah. And, dude. and actually then with Ozymandias, you've got like some Bruce Wayne in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. There's a lot of. Or 
well, or Lex Luthor. Yeah. More appropriately, Le- wow. But know. well, yeah, yeah. If, I mean, w- yeah. if Lex Luthor had had a squeaky clean history, <laughs> public image, yeah, huh? Yeah. I don't know. He's I mean, the villain, I, yeah. I mean, the okay, uh, especially in the landscape of 1980s uh, comics, this story is extremely clever as far as how it oh, plays yeah. with the tropes of the time, the traditional yeah. comic book tropes. Um, I mean, there's a reason it's a classic. It is like it, 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 it turned every trope on its head. And it's just, it's oozing with subtext, Mm -hmm. which is fun. A good story has a lot of that underlying current. Absolutely. Um, All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, He, Daniel goes to visit Ozymandias, tells him about Rorschach's warning Adrian is unworried. Then Rorschach goes to visit uh, Dr. Manhattan at a government lab with his girlfriend, Laurie, Silk Spectre 2, Electric Boogaloo. (laughs) Dr. Manhattan. New batch. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) New batch is the new corn week. (laughs) Electric uh, electric Boogaloo (laughs) 2, the new batch. (laughs) Still taken. <laughs> Take and do the new batch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta keep an eye on this kid. Uh, Just gotta have more kids in case one gets kidnapped. <laughs> anyway, they, you, know, you can take as many as you want. How many takens did they make? Was it like three or four? <laughs> how many takens? How many kids does Liam Neeson have? <laughs> I thought it was just the one kid. I thought that I she thought just that always too. dated like a Turkish drug dealer who then got her kidnapped. <laughs> she just yeah. keeps getting kidnapped like Alexis on Shit's Creek. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Dr. Manhattan is swinging free and he tells him. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I remember at the time um, there being like articles <laughs> in, on, in yeah. magazines and on websites about <laughs> how like hardcore it was that we were going to see the blue dong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and in the theaters, that thing was like three feet long. Oh yeah. That was huge. I was like, that thing could crud up. <laughs> that <drink. laughs> uh, um, that's another, uh, to, I, I don't, go ahead. To answer the question, there were three takens and uh, one uh, TV series. What? Oh. There was a series? It yes. was called Taking wow. It to the Streets. <laughs> <laughs> it was- but anyways, the um, the most human quality of Dr. Manhattan is his sexual side, that he gets horny and he can feel love and affection. So it's, I don't even know if Alan Moore meant it, but there's that Superman thing that we've talked about before. Absolutely. You know, like, I'm definitely human in that way. Well, and Dr. Manhattan not only is human in that way, he's like thirsty as fuck. Fuck. Thirsty. Yeah. yeah. He's a real um, freak, man. Uh huh. He's on the prowl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's so, all, hey, baby, I'm a doctor. <laughs> the doctor of Manhattan. Doctor Love. Yeah. <laughs> or, or more accurately, we're a doctor. Multiples of us. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. I want, I want to see a team up of uh, Dr. Manhattan and Dr. Detroit. <laughs> 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 the two cities i know I it's s- a good thing that we didn't build the nuke in like williamsburg or potsdam or- <laughs> so nice it was the manhattan project right uh, and- we didn't build it in manhattan either <laughs> yeah they didn't uh but it's fun to think yeah yeah if only it, yeah if they had named it after las cruces <laughs> yeah or gila I- it was so hard to hear him say gila <laughs> all right. Uh, so, um, naked blue guy can see all times in the future, and he can control matter. Um, he can't see the future now, though. He thinks it's because of a uh, nuclear war that's coming. Uh, he teleports Rorschach away, um, and it, which he, was funny. Um, both in the like, this was one of those shots uh, that was directly from the comic, like in the comic and in the movie. It was. Uh, funny it's yeah yeah he's mid-sentence yeah mm-hmm. i'm not leaving without having my say <laughs> right <laughs> and then he's just standing out in the rain yeah he knew that would happen yeah um that's also 
so Rorschach is the only one that he um, teleports uh, involuntarily in the it's film. True. And uh-huh. he's uh, ends up popping him <laughs> like a balloon at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Why are you listening yeah. to this if this? Yeah. But um, yeah. So, uh, all right. Um, so uh, we also learn he's working with Adrian to create unlimited free energy. Then uh, Lori goes, meets with Daniel. They have dinner and talk about old times. We get uh, the the 99 Luft Balloons music cue mm-hmm. here. Well, and she walks in, it's a different, it's like, uh, uh, uh. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. song well, yeah well yeah no no because yeah it starts out with the intro and then when when like it reveals well, her right. walking it starts in boom dun 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 yeah. dun 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 yeah it's that one first you're right um, uh here at dinner this is where they discuss uh captain carnage um that was the the guy who pretended to be uh, a supervillain because he liked uh, to get beat up he was a masochist yeah um That's a funny concept and uh, whatever happened to him, he tried it on Rorschach, and Rorschach dropped him down an elevator shaft. <laughs> yep. No time for jokes, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guy's hardcore. <laughs> He's Rorschach. <laughs> he lives hardcore. <laughs> he, yeah. He he drinks monster energy drinks. He has it tattooed and on beans. him. <laughs> and he How does he not have to shit every couple of hours? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I got diarrhea again. <laughs> but, I wish this trench coat was two kids. <laughs> uh, so um, she tells him how unsatisfied with her relationship with Dr. Manhattan she is. Then we get the Eddie's funeral sequence. Um, this is what this is like what I'm talking about with like very, very slow editing and push-ins. <laughs> We don't just yeah. get a shot like of the comic panel with the the flag on the coffin. It's a slow push in on it with the sounds of silence playing as we push it in. And the entire song. Yep. This is another entire song for the, the scene. The sounds of silence by Simon and Simon. Like, <laughs> holy crap they they need a different music editor to be like cool we can fade this out into some like uh cinematic uh, music that's a good point <laughs> yeah and speaking ish about that yeah the sound editing in this movie was one thing that i did not like it was super it was it was kind of over the top kind of batman 66 yeah. ish yeah lots of when swooshes it, swoosh oh, everything's and swooshed when it's not super loud with guns and explosions, it's a dude whispering through a mask. Well, it's that Nolan problem. Like, yeah. is that just artistic? To be very, very quiet. And then right. very, the quiet very parts loud. quiet, the loud parts loud. Yeah. Play play with it. All right. Yeah. We shouldn't be able to actually understand what's happening. It should be a frustrating experience attempting to figure out what the fuck is going on. Well, and don't we all know that a gun is firing by the, you know, the fire at the end of the barrel and the motion and the, you know, like it. Well, anyways. I'm yeah, I know. I They're know. like, it's so. <laughs> yep. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind the loud parts being loud if the quiet parts weren't so quiet. So you're constantly adjusting the volume. Agreed. Yeah. It's not the volume that I, yeah. All right. All right, so um, uh, we get flashbacks from each hero remembering their experiences with the comedian. Lori remembers visiting her mom, the first specter, and then her mom flashes back from within the flashback to the minute. Oh, that wasn't a, that wasn't a flashback. So we cut away from the funeral to her visiting her mom. Yeah, she's and then she's co- visiting her mom while the funeral's going on because she had no reason to go. Oh, okay, I see. Mm-hmm. I must have dozed off at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she flashes back to the Minutemen in the 40s, comedian trying to rape her. He stopped. That was harsh and vicious and uncomfortable. Yeah, it really was. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they played on this in the Watchmen series. Like this moment with hood, hooded justice, mm-hmm. in a way, fits into what they made the hooded justice to be. Yeah, really fit anyway. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, so then we get Dr. Manhattan in Vietnam. Um, why did the comedian go? Why would you send the comedian? As right. Well, because well, he was a government spook. He was working for the government. So I imagine he was kind of sent as like an advisor or handler. Yeah, no, he was yeah. probably his handler. Yeah, that's probably it, the handler. Yeah. I guess I'm uh, not confused why he'd be in Vietnam. And he also like, loves his work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. He likes he likes killing Asian people. <laughs> it's why he's there. <laughs> yeah. Well, as well as uh, the uh, sex also. Yes. Definitely that. But I mean, like, we'll send the guy who could end the war in an hour and the guy who tells jokes. Well, and the guy who complicates every situation, clearly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You could just send the one guy. Oh, I know why. And, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was so, it's so weird. Cause it's like that in the comic too, where they're both oh, yeah. together. Right. Yeah. This whole yeah. scene, this is, scene is exact. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I will say on the music cue for uh ride of the Valkyrie. Oh just, yeah. Oof. And, and the helicopters. No. The helicopters. Yeah. yeah. The helicopters yeah. coming in. Um, yeah. I, I asked Jude actually, if he knew what that was a reference to, um, he did not. So, um, Apocalypse Now went on our to watch list. Um, that's fine. Oh wow! Yeah, he, he he's not. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. He shouldn't. He's fourteen. But I was curious if yeah. it was one of those things that through osmosis had like like he knows like for instance like um, Blair Witch he hasn't seen yet, but he knows about like with the I'm sorry right. and like the shaky cam and like handy well, cam thing. Yeah. 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 Well, when he turns twenty four and hasn't seen it, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no need. <laughs> anyway. Um so all right. Uh Yeah, um the funeral. Well, yeah, we we're, yeah, so yeah. no, but Dr. Manhattan and the comedian Vietnam, comedian murders the pregnant oh. Vietnamese lady. We see a meeting of the watchmen or I guess this would be the crime busters. Um Yes. Oh, um okay. though they they didn't call it the crime busters in the movie. They called it the watchmen. Yeah. 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 Um comedian um, also in the uh, in the the movie that we just watched, it was Ozymandias who called this meeting. Um, but in the comics, it was Captain Metropolis trying to revive the the hero Fad gotcha. from the forties. Well, and this was also nineteen seventy in in um, the movie, I believe. Did they call it? Did they, they call it nineteen seventy? Yes, they specifically said in the movie it was nineteen seventy. Okay. Um. So. Um. All right. A uh, comedian doesn't think they're likely to make any difference and that they're all going to die in a nuclear holocaust. And then he sets a fire inside. Um, <laughs> we, uh, then we see Night Owl as he remembers him and the comedian trying to disperse a protest in the 70s. It's turning violent. And the comedian just starts murdering protesters. I mean, he into- he's not restricted to Asians, and at this point, he says it's <laughs> it's good to be back on American soil. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he, he also enjoys he also en- he enjoys murdering people of many different colors. Just yeah, yeah. just not white. Which, I, I think that realistically, he just enjoys having a mandate to murder. I think that's really what his it's whole thing like, was. He's yeah. like, yeah, he can kill anybody in Vietnam because the government sent him. He can kill anybody in America now because the government sent him. Right. So, I don't think that he's particularly racist. I think that he just mm, uh, has a taste for killing. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's an element of racism to the comedian. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. I think so. How do you live through the 40s and 50s in the United sure. States? Um, yeah. I mean, the the protesters he was killing were all very specifically largely African American, and that's true. Yeah. Well, and hippies and stuff. Yeah, don't forget hippies. Nixon. Nixon's in charge. He was not a fan of protesting. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so if he could have only other than Kent State, but if he could have let the comedian go, you know. So yeah. Um. Yeah. But so. again, so that that reviewer must have been talking about the series because this is not a woke movie. A lot of these people yeah. are hardcore conservative, you know, pro McCarthy, pro Reagan. Right. No. No. But I mean, a lot of a lot of um, if if you paint that in a negative light. They consider that woke sometimes. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, being critical so. of it. Yeah, but uh, all yeah. Right. So all right. So um, let's see. Rorschach goes and visits ex supervillain Moloch. Um, he thinks he may be the one after the superheroes because he saw him at the funeral. 
Mal- in the uh, in the comics, this first meeting with uh, Moloch and Rorschach, uh, Rorschach was actually hiding in the refrigerator. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he did not see that Punky Brewster episode. <laughs> <laughs> and burst out on him. Uh, but there was a, a later scene in the comics where... It's a, um, it's a me, Rorschach. <laughs> Uh, a later scene, Moloch is going to the refrigerator. He's got his gun because he's afraid Rorschach's in there. And then he finds the note that says behind you. Uh, um, he's just in there practicing his lie. Just like dinner served. <laughs> <laughs> Snack attack. <laughs> Franks and beans. No. Yeah. Hold the Franks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. All right. Double quarter pounder. <laughs> Um, just sitting in a fridge. So, how long was he in the fridge? <laughs> That's it, because you don't know when he's getting home. He's a retired supervillain. He doesn't have a job. Um. So, uh, Moloch tells Rorschach that the comedian visited him a week earlier, babbling and crying. Um. Then he re- Moloch is the closest to like the superhuman kind of like because he has those pointy ears. Yeah, and he, he did in the comic too, right? <laughs> so he seems otherworldly with that one little feature. But anyway, kind of cool. Yeah. Um. Do we know in the comics did he have any powers or do anything, or was he just a genius level intellect? I think probably um. That. I don't think he had any powers. Uh, <laughs> Close up magic. I, I I didn't do a deep dive into Moloch's character. All right. Um, Thank you. So uh, Moloch tells him he has cancer. Then Rorschach monologues. Then we cut to Lori in Manhattan um, having sex. <laughs> she gets mad because he's simultaneously working on his project with Adrian. Isn't that dude distant anyways? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even if it was just him. Well, and I don't understand why he also doesn't have multiple versions of himself in the lab. That could be helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, reverse it where he's sleeping with Laurie and his clone. You know, yeah, he's got like four or five versions of himself in the lab. No, they were like, let's make this shit real weird. <laughs> You're right. That's stupid. I'll send three <laughs> to turn her on and I'll just keep working. <laughs> Women are complicated. It that's seems a read- in, uh, in their minds. <laughs> that's that- a Reed Richards move. Yeah, it is. Um. So, all right. So he only needs to stretch one part of himself from the lab, though. He just sends his <laughs> penis into the other room. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, like the, the 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 music starts playing from the anti tentacle. Your dick wants you to check this out. <laughs> or my dick's got to see this. <laughs> oh, all right. So, um. She gets mad. She leaves with him, breaking up. Uh, she goes to Daniel's house. He offers to let her stay there for a while. Um, they um, go out to dinner. Um, on the way, they're attacked by a gang. They beat up the gang, while at the same time, Dr. Manhattan has a big interview on TV. He is accused of causing cancer in those he's around, including his old girlfriend, Janie. Uh, she's there and she confronts Manhattan. He becomes overwhelmed and teleports himself to Mars. As I have often wished I could do in many situations. And Snyder didn't watch or didn't write Watchmen, but he replicates this uh, scene kind of with the dude in the wheelchair that blows up Congress. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the surprise guest, like dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. While Superman's testifying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right. We get a flashback to Dr. Manhattan's origin story. He is a physicist who got trapped in the chamber. <laughs> I know it's so run of the mill or done before, but it's somehow my favorite. Yeah. I mean, well, I think he was in the series too. Yeah. It makes sense going back for his watch and all that stuff. And... Well, he's the only one who wasn't just like a fascist dude who wanted to beat people up. But Brian's yeah. right, right there. You had to justify why he went back in that chamber. Yeah. And so his whole life, you know, like if it wasn't all that shit, and it's like you went in for a watch in the fifties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. weren't awesome watches. <laughs> okay. Um, in the uh, in this, they called it his father's watch. In the the book, it was actually um, Janie's mother's watch uh, uh-huh. that w- had be 
had been broken like a month before and he promised he would fix it and he had it all fixed, but he left it in the right. the chamber. Um, but Which, he's like going to surprise her with and it. And that works too. Yeah. Okay. Either one of those works really well. They're it's better fun. than Bruce just being like You're strapped right. to a thing. Shoot me with the gamma rays. <laughs> like what? Do <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Gamma me. Like, why don't you try a duck first or something? Or like, <laughs> no, a, He ran out to save a kid, right? Yeah. But I mean, in the movies, it's just. Yeah, you're right. It's just Bruce him. is just like, he's like, shoot it at my testicles. First. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> naughty. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, this made a lot of sense to me. And I'm glad that they included this scene and everything because it yeah, shows important. why he is how he is. Oh, and explains and the-, the watch thing and all that stuff really well and the progress of him forming yeah, where yeah. And the, the narration was exactly the same for you know like a circulatory system was spotted outside the fence mm-hmm. muscle and skeleton you know yeah that was cool that's neat yeah yeah his particles coming back together yeah so all right um we then we see him through the decades including his relationships with janie and Lori. <laughs> <laughs> and like through his narration, he's just like, she accused me of leaving her because she was old, which was true. No, she <laughs> says like, you're looking for a younger, yeah, model or whatever. She, put, like, but, yeah. she, she calls her jail bait. Is what she oh, that's called. right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. You see him making eyes at her in the room with his wife in the room also. You know? Yeah. This was really well done, I thought. Yeah. Because that can be really, really like hackneyed to do. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it made sense. It's yeah. great that he copped to it. Yeah. You know, just to just to show how callous he can be. Yeah. Like he yeah, he, he's yeah. Not only is he like enough of a dick that he is going to leave his wife for a younger woman. Right. He's enough of this a dick that of, he doesn't feel bad about it at all. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, it's honest. It's not true. Yeah. <laughs> you just say what you want. Uh, this may be an unanswered question, but he is so smart and he understands things so well and he is he was at one point human and he understands time backwards and forwards. How does he not remember how emotions work? Like, right? People, people fake emotional states and put on <laughs> yeah. an act for their partners <laughs> and for their friends and loved ones and coworkers. It's yeah. like he was kidnapped and raised by another very aloof family. <laughs> yeah. like, I, like I work in retail, you can fake it, dude. Like it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Like, but he's just like, nah. Emotions Especially are to get laid. To me. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> like, pretended love. Yeah, because he's definitely interested in getting laid quite a bit. So you think he would. Learn to fake it. Put on it. the charm. Well, yeah. And John Osterman Put on some pants. was a relatively well balanced emotional dude. Right. Oh, yeah. He was. He seemed yeah. he seemed one hundred percent normal. He seemed happy and and, and available. Yeah. You know, emotionally. Emotionally now available. Just, yeah. Now he's just like, I don't know. Lori, I live on the moon in my brain. Yeah. Like he's all fuck it. She's like, You live on the moon on your brain and your Fingers in my mouth, motherfucker. <laughs> like, He's all a, a hard penis and a small penis contain the same amount of atoms. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think that's literally true. <laughs> yeah. He's like, the atoms in my balls will soon not be there. <laughs> <laughs> the atoms in my balls. Let's all right. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> For later. Oh. It's science. Right. It is science. Let's see. Uh <laughs> Then we go back uh, on Earth. Nixon gets word that the Soviets are moving their tanks, so he gets ready for nuclear war. Um, at his office, Adrian is attacked by a would-be assassin, which he disarms, but the assassin... Well, and that's historically accurate, but it, it was Reagan instead of Nixon at the time. But yeah, yeah. The, the moving of the tanks to the Afghan border. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like... 2020, 2021, everything feels really terrible all the time. But mm-hmm. it's weird that the decades that we think back to as being a like lighter, more innocent time were full. Uh-huh. Like there was that nuclear threat just there, like yeah. hovering. Uh-huh. It's funny. the future of mutually assured destruction at any point. Yeah. And the futility around it. Um, actually, yeah. Dylan had, Bob Dylan had talked about that. Like we were taught to hide under our desks. For a nuclear explosion, yeah. like it created a very weird. It's kind of like the the kids now on the active shooter drill. Yeah, like, yeah, that has an impact on you. Oh yeah, even if the nuke doesn't drop or the shooter doesn't come, practicing the futile act of hiding under your desk is terrifying. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. 
So because yeah, there there's a no situation where hiding under your desk is actually <laughs> get in a door jam, yeah. like an earthquake just, maybe. You know, maybe like, an earthquake. It, it all comes maybe. from earthquake drills. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I guess at least stuff isn't going to fall directly on you. Yeah, <laughs> give you a little, a little place to breathe if the building collapses. <laughs> if I'm the, trapped, but it, this desk. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Uh, yeah, the threat of nuclear war. Yeah. Um. Rorschach goes. Oh yeah. So Adrian tries to question the assassin, but the assassin bites down on a cyanide capsule before he can. Um, Rorschach visits Moloch again to question him about a clue he found connecting him to the assassin. It's a setup. Moloch's dead. The police are outside. And after a battle, Rorschach is captured by the police. Um, yeah. This was cool. This action sequence. I think Snyder does good action. Yeah. That I think he does. Yeah. Uh, and the surprising action is cool too. Like the tension mm-hmm. building up to that moment. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and Rorschach just like getting ready, like, come on, let's do this, let's do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, when he realizes it's a trap, and yeah. then what he has to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you hadn't read the book, this would have been a fun, an interesting scene, you know, because he, the dude, is so mysterious, and there's so much emotion out of Jack Harrell Haley. Yeah. Give me back my face. I oh. fucking believed that. Hell yeah. Something. Yeah. Could have been a corny line. Not at all. Um. Let's see. Then in prison, he's targeted by the other prisoners who want him dead. We get a flashback <laughs> to his terrible childhood and the terrible things he saw as a hero. The whole thing with the dude and the dogs and the little girl. Oh, yeah. And the little girl. Why would you show him? Why would you give him a Rorschach test? Exactly. It, it, it almost seemed like a microaggression. No, I don't mean it as a joke. Like, why? What answers do you think you're going to get out of the guy called Rorschach? The dude's name is Rorschach. Yes, he clearly knows what this. these tests are. Yes, and he's learned how to hide his answers. It's a beautiful flower. It's a butterfly. Yeah. So the doctor should have known, even if it was their very first meeting, which it was. The doctor should. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, Maybe done some role playing with hand puppets or some shit, but you know, <laughs> just wars. Yeah. Um, in the prison mess hall, Rorschach is attacked. He deals pretty brutally with his attacker, with a, the uh, deep fryer. Um, then at Daniel's house, he and Lori talk about their hero days. Um, they're about to have sex, but appara- he can't perform. Is that what's going on? He can't get it, get it going? Uh, that's what's going on. I think Nerv- that it's nervous. the thought of yeah, uh, Manhattan. I was just going to say, you're banging yeah. Matt, Dr. Manhattan's girl. You're, yeah, you're... <laughs> he stopped the Vietnam War. Banging the Ubermensch. And yeah. now you're it's banging receding hairline and those funky Night serial owl. killer glasses. Yeah. You know? The most... Buddy. By the way, he looked... He was the most 80s looking dude I've seen on screen that wasn't actually in the 80s in a long time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Plus, he's dealing with the friend zone bullshit because she, uh, she keeps mentioning John, even if it's not like pining for him. So, you know, it's like, I'm here to console you. Could you please stop talking about your ex They delve into it a little more in the book. Um, he's kind of felt uh, impotent since 77, the Keen Act, since he had to give up uh, superheroing. Um, yeah, he just huh. doesn't feel important anymore. Right. Yeah, it was all about his alter ego. Yeah. And that was such a Bruce Wayne moment, just naked down there staring at his costume. <laughs> right. In, almost dark. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, he wants to bang that suit. <laughs> He's so <laughs> in love with himself. Uh, well, I, I took that as he wants to put the suit on because it will make him uh, feel regain viral. some of that vigor. Yeah. Viral. Well, yeah. And, yeah. Make him feel whole again. Like well, a, yeah. And we, we see then, of course, they do it and then he can. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, kids, don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You become a vigilante so you can bang chicks. You can bone. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was at this point that I decided to call his lair the owl nest. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, that works. Um, all right. So back in prison, Rorschach is threatened by the crime boss he put away. Um, meanwhile, Daniel and Lori decide to go suit up and go out in Archimedes, his his uh, ship. Um they're going to fight some crime. <laughs> they save some kids from a burn. They, they stop a fire with bullets. 
<laughs> Naturally. Um, I just well, then like- there's a prison riot because the person Rorschach attacked died. Yes. So they had been waiting on that kind of thing, which is not uncommon. It's happened with like guards who've committed homicide in there, you know? Yeah. We're going to wait. If he dies, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that happens. Um, this is we also get the scene. This is cut in between them do, doing the fire. There's the scene where they have sex in the ship um, against the and the flamethrower comes out of the end. When he, when he, when, <laughs> at the moment of climax, the flamethrower. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet mystery of life! At last, I found you. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Rorschach gets out of his cell, murders his way through the prison. Collects his superhero outfit from the psychiatrist. Uh, Lori and Daniel decide to break him out. So they go there. They break into the prison. They find Rorschach. He kills the crime boss, and they all escape. Happily ever after. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. They get back to Daniel's uh, lair. Dr. Manhattan shows up, and he takes... It's the... called the Owl Nest. He get, they get back. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they get back. All it takes. They get back to the owl's nest, um, where Doctor Manhattan is waiting for them. He takes Lori to Mars with him, so she can try to convince him to save the world. Meanwhile, Night Owl and Rorschach uh, rough up some guys in a bar and get the clues that lead them to go back well, to Adrian. And John's such a dick, and you—he forgot that humans can't breathe on Mars. Yeah, right. but like you said, he was Billy Crudup before. Yeah. He seemed like an empathetic, reasonable man. But he's like, "Oh yeah, you guys can't do that." Sorry. And he knows time <laughs> forward and backwards. He is right? able to so keep knew. these things in his brain, but he can't remember that human physiology requires atmosphere. <laughs> or he didn't see himself fucking with her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's just doing it to be a dick. He's like, "I'm just curious how long a human being can be on Mars without breathing." <laughs> just it's not that he forgot. To be a dick. It was yeah. just experimentation you know yeah yeah yes that's it true. was also him being real freaky he's like he's like well she doesn't let me choke her let me uh suffocate her let's see if that works <laughs> he is a pulls the wing off of flies kind of yeah dude now yeah he is um so all right they rorschach and uh night owl go to adrian's office they go through his files um they discover that the company that the would-be assassin worked for and that Moloch worked for is actually part of um, of uh, Ozymandias' uh, Vite Industries. Vite Industries, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a nod to the pharaohs who he considers himself to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Godly mortal. Well, yeah, and he literally makes Cheops in Antarctica. Right. That's yeah. true, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Which is super sweet, by the way. It is that. badass. Yeah. I want an Antarctic retreat. <laughs> Built in an Egyptian emperor style. Yeah. Style. Imagine being that crew. We've heard the jokes of the crew that rebuilt the Death Star, but like imagine the dance because <laughs> he doesn't have the power of uh, Manhattan. Yeah. He, he had- can't make shit materialize. <laughs> Hired contractors and laborers. Yeah, it's outside labor. No way he did it himself. Uh, Some penguins, maybe. <laughs> um, so the average... Okay, so they go... All right, they go to Antarctica. Rorschach and, um, <laughs> and, and Night Owl decide to fly to Antarctica. Um, how long would it, does it take to fly from... Where are they? New York? Yes. New York to Antarctica. It depends on how fast you're going. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there's no way around that. <laughs> how well, this, And did they go in a straight line through the atmosphere? Did they go through space? Mm, that also oh, makes a difference. Yeah, That's how fast can his ship go? Do we know? Did they, did they stop in Buenos Aires? Yeah, did, did they stop they for further? fuel in, uh, in Guam? That's a good point. What does it run on? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, uh, and, But then also Rorschach's fine. He just pops the collar on his trench coat. Well, that's of, what yeah, I was going to say. Down into it. That's, that's, like, that's, no, that's, dead. That's what I was going to say. It can get up to negative seventy six degrees in yeah. Antarctica. You can down to negative seventy six degrees. <laughs> um, he there there was a video a few days ago about a guy that went that his car broke down and he got out to try to check under the hood in negative twenty degree weather, mm-hmm. and he was outside with just a jacket. 
um, for 15 minutes and his ears froze off. Like the tip yeah, of his ears. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Rorschach's uh, extremities definitely froze off. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. mask does not no, keep him warm enough. boner. <laughs> <laughs> well, also that mask is going to freeze because it's full face. of... Uh, yeah. yeah yeah and the liquid like i was in the in between yeah yeah so anyway oh but before they leave rorschach leaves his journal with a small newspaper um the frontiersman mm-hmm. um well and they don't address it but a- adrian's there because it's it's one place he knows that nuclear war isn't good you know yeah who's gonna yeah. send a missile to antarctica yeah exactly he knows he's gonna be safe there um so uh, from his own doings yeah uh, so Rorschach leaves his journal with a small newspaper. Uh, Manhattan refuses to come back to Earth to save humanity, but he does reveal to Lori that the comedian was her dad. <laughs> Such a dick. Right. Right. Um, Night Al and Rorschach arrive in Antarctica. They confront Adrian. Um, so I caught a couple things on his TVs. He was watching Mad Max. He was uh-huh. watching um, uh, Dirty Harry. Um Oh, there was one other. What was there was a third thing? Well, Muppet he's watching babies? the what's that? The what? Muppet Babies? I didn't catch Muppet Babies. <laughs> it wasn't there. I, <laughs> oh, I was like the Muppets. Uh, I was like, yeah, the, Muppet, uh, Muppet Babies didn't exist in eighty five, Al. <laughs> the um shit. Oh, the nostalgia channel that um Eddie was watching with the um it was Calvin Klein or guests. Or oh yeah. The unforgettable. unforgettable. Yeah. yeah. I, re- I remember that commercial actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I tr- there was a bunch of stuff on those screens that <laughs> and very few of it, very little of it was news. He was watching mm-hmm. a lot of movies and shows at once. He yeah. knew what was happening around the world. He didn't really need to stay updated at this point, I guess. <laughs> He's like, yeah. what's, what kind of trouble is Jack Tripper getting into? <laughs> <laughs> So um, when they're traveling to um, Antarctica, we were talking, Brian mentioned music cues earlier. Um, we have mm. all along the watchtower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this, uh, every issue ended with a quote. Sometimes it was from a song. Sometimes it was from something else. Um, but at, it was the end of chapter 10 of the comics where um, all along the watchtower was quoted. Um, in the last little box. And it was the uh, two riders yeah. are approaching, right? Yeah, it yeah. was. Um, and the wind began to howl. Yep. Yeah. Where the that song ends, starting a whole other story. I love that. And Jimmy's uh, version is the superior. Yeah, that's. I was so glad that they used yeah. the Jimi Hendrix version. Yeah. Because, well, and Even also Dylan it, said that. Evokes action versus Dylan's, which yeah. evokes you know yeah yeah folks like, um, Holy shit, we're going to do something flipping to the uh that page real quick is um outside in the distance a wild cat did growl two riders were approaching the wind began to howl uh, and he's got the, he's, he's got, got a wild cat. his wild cat yeah yep um all right so they let's see they fight adrian adrian takes them pretty easily he explains his plan to them um eddie found out about his plan so he killed him um, then he had to get rid of Dr. Manhattan, so he faked cancer and blocked his future site. He reveals he's going to destroy several major cities around the world, make it look like Dr. Manhattan did it in order to unite the world against Dr. Manhattan and save humanity from total extinction. He reveals that it's too late. He has already triggered the uh, explosions. 35 yeah. minutes prior. And the the line is great. It's like... Ew. I'm not a comic book villain. There's no way I would have told you this if, if you could have stopped me. Right. Right. Yeah. And such an Alan Moore, you know, sort of like, no, it happened. They didn't save anything at the last minute. Yeah. yeah. Very. The world Alan was Moore. nuked. Yeah. 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 Very Alan Moore. Very, but and and again, this is all great playing with the tropes of the yeah. of the time. Yeah. Failure is a big, big, big surprise in a comic book. Yes, yes. it is. It's almost <laughs> foreboding. Yeah. Yeah. The They didn't use the line in the movie, but in the book, he, Vite tells them, the only thing you've accomplished is failing to stop me from saving the world. Yeah. yeah. You're very good at being bad. 
At and I just want to shout out. I want to shout out to Jeremy Irons, like yeah, from man. the series. Woo! Like it was seamless. That was exactly Ozzy when he's older. Like, yeah. This, you know, even this Ozzy, this movie version. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Absolutely. Incredible casting. Incredible acting on his part. Incredible writing. Yeah. 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 He'll never see his wrongdoing. He's I cannot people. wait for like us to Lex get an Luther. opportunity to dive into that at some point. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that was so good. That was the Watchmen Man. series was so good. Um, it expands upon this in ways that I never could have imagined. Same mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah. And it all makes sense. God bless him. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So we, we see a good chunk of New York destroyed. Nixon thinks it was done by Dr. Manhattan. Um, the funny thing is, um, so they didn't use the giant interdimensional squid. Squid. Yes. Like they did from the book. However, the project um, underneath the, the TVs, as you st- as we see the explosions going off in Moscow and London and everywhere. Uh Um, The project was called squid. I don't know what it was an acronym for. Oh yeah. So I never catch that. All right. So they, they referenced it at least. Yeah. There was a little sign um, below the TVs. This is the most contentious difference. I think amongst fans is the lack of squid in the movie. Right. That makes sense. He stuck to everything else. So, and well, Uh, I feel like the squid is is harder to explain than a teleportation type of removal of matter. Yeah, it's more comic you know? booky for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, because did you guys know that the first issue of the Justice League they fight a giant starfish? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Oh, check it out! Wow, so, weird. Yep. Um, I mean, so I I personally think in this version of Watchmen it works very well at not being the squid. Like yeah, I, I it worked, yeah. I, I don't I think the squid is not the kind of thing that Zack Snyder and this era, two thousand nine, yeah, was a different time for comic book movies. You couldn't yeah, you yeah. couldn't you couldn't lean into that kind of thing like you're able to in right. 2019, 2020. Yeah. Mainstream they, yeah. viewers would not understand and they'd probably be a little mad. Well yeah. it would be confusing too. Yes, because right. at no point does Doctor Manhattan be like, "Check out this calamari that I made," or interdimensional, Oof, you yeah. know, or yeah, pulling something from another dimension. But yeah. then when they introduce the the giant squid in the series, it totally worked. Absolutely, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, on so many levels. Yeah, like Tim Blake Nelson's fear, and yeah, wow. Oh yeah, right. the squid in the series is my favorite. <laughs> so yeah, cool. and he couldn't ad- he couldn't admit that it was all you know because he invested so much of his life around that incident. Yeah, yeah. He, couldn't, he couldn't believe it was a setup. Yeah, yeah, it's all woven in in such a clever way. Yeah, such a clever way. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so if you if you enjoyed Watchmen, you'll love March of the Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. So all right. Um. Manhattan and Lori arrive back on Earth. Manhattan sees what's happening. They go to Antarctica. He confronts Adrian, who tries to kill him with his machine, but that does not work. Um, yeah. He was surprised. Yeah. That's the first thing that <coughs> Adrian did yeah. not have handled like he thought he would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another direct, direct quote from the book. He's like, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the first thing I learned how to do. Sky yeah. daddy. <laughs> daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Um. So, all right. Uh, he killed his. He killed Bubastis for nothing. Yeah. yeah no reason. Sad. Yeah. Sad. Um. On TV, Nixon announces that America and the Soviets have joined forces to defend against Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> um. <laughs> so you tell that dude if he comes back around here, keep my name out his mouth. Uh, <laughs> seeing this Doc, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan agrees to go along with Adrian's plan reluctantly Daniel and Lori also agree but Rorschach does not in order to keep the plan intact Dr. Manhattan kills Rorschach oh and his blood splatter made a Rorschach on yeah. Antarctica that's I don't, an intense moment too Yeah, I'm not sure if I ever if I noticed it before but I noticed it this time um, Rorschach's emotion um, when he when he rips the mask off, it's like even he knows that he needs to be stopped, right? Mm. Like he his yes, um, his commitment to to never compromise, even in the face of Armageddon, like never backing down, um, right? Like he has to try to 
stop this, but even deep inside, he knows that he himself needs to be stopped. That's a good yeah, yeah. He has no place in this new world. I, I read mm-hmm. it as he knows that Manhattan has already thought through the logic of it and there's no escaping the logical aspect of it. You know, yeah. right. He's but passionate like, about the truth, but the logic tracks. Yeah. Right. Like Al said, yeah, he'll run towards an explosion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So um, then in his rage, Daniel beats up Adrian, telling him he's like all bad and stuff and nobody likes you. Then he and Lori leave. Um, then we get a time skip. Lori tells her mom she knows her dad's the comedian. Her mom apologizes for not telling her. Then Lori and Daniel um, do some kissing to talk about how everything's going to be okay. Then we go to the uh, New Frontiersman, the paper where Rorschach left his journal. The editor laments that there's nothing bad in the world to write about. Um, The camera focuses in on Rorschach's journal. Roll credits. They mention uh, Ronald Reagan running in 88. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, oh, yeah. in the book, it was Robert Redford, and they stayed true to that in the, the series. Mm-hmm. When they, series. Because he was the ultimate hippie liberal at this time, even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we roll Well, cr- and the comment about the cowboy. Yeah. Uh, was just yep. on the tale of, of Bush mm-hmm. having been president for eight years. Oh, and Reagan literally was a cow- not a yeah. real cowboy, but he played yeah, a cowboy. A off. cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I felt like that was kind of a like them pointing at the real world just a little bit. Oh like yeah, a cowboy would never be president. Like, what I think so. Yeah, totally. Yeah, back when we we never would have imagined that an actor could be As president. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, two, the, two. <laughs> the first song in the credits was. Uh, Desolation Row by My by, Chemical Romance. That's by what My I Chemical say, Romance. Yes. Um, I like the uh, uh, Desolation Row, the the song by Bob Dylan, was quoted at the end of Chapter One in the comics, uh, like Watchtower was. Uh, the quote they used was, "At midnight, all the agents and superhuman crew go out and round up everyone who knows more than they do." Yep. Mm. So interesting. I wonder how much Alan Moore was inspired by songs to create oh, the, the lot, framework yeah. for the story. Yeah. Cause that line, you know, it perfectly yeah. explains kind of what the watchmen do. And it's funny cause out of context, it totally works. But in the song, um, that verse is one of the verses that, you know, anti Dylan fans were just like, this is gobbledygook. Like he's just <laughs> putting to, you know, like and yeah. characters like Einstein and, uh, Oh yeah. Leonardo and yeah. Well, my per- <laughs> but it's perfect. Yeah, totally. My personal favorite uh, Dylan quote is still "wiggle, wiggle, wiggle." <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, that's it. Um. That's the movie. That's the whole movie. We made yep. it. We did it. Yeah. Um. So okay. I have an unanswered question. Did they okay. did they never pass the what was it twenty fifth amendment, or did Nixon get it repealed the one that doesn't allow a president to serve more than two terms? I assume it was repealed, or a martial law type situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, because in uh, of course, not that the series counts uh, in the context of this, but Redford was on his third administration or right. his third term. Yeah, so well, I, I assume that the law was repealed because Nixon yeah. kept the world safe during vietnam or right or like a putin type situation like yeah we have elections wink wink Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah yeah um and or or possibly nixon was also behind the clone army (laughs) yeah you know it's true if there ever was a sith oh what was his name (laughs) dark dark Dark, dark (laughs) cover-up yeah all right. Uh, Darth Trickiest. Hideous work. Yeah. Trickiest. <laughs> Darth Jowls. <laughs> oh. Darth Not a Crook. Oh, Pat. <laughs> Darth Not a Crook. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have too many unanswered questions. I mean, it's it was just a very faithful. Um, it really was. Adaptation. Yeah. Um, it was visually stimulating. That guy nailed it with the script. It's not the best movie in the world, but he, he did it, especially when we can compare later work. But yeah, 
He yeah. pulled it off. He, he earned his check. Everybody did. Did a good job. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't, I don't know how someone could have been done a better job of, of uh, adapting this particular book. Yeah. Well, and he knew to take the majority of things from the book rather than his own vision. Like, there's no way Terry Gilliam is capable of that. No. It has to be his vision, both visually and narrative. Yeah. So Zach was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it exactly like this. Yeah, to his credit, too. Um, Absolutely. Well, and this was the second one he, he adapted. I mean, 300 was an adaptation, right. comics adaptation yeah. also. Or, or what if Tim Burton ran with this? Oh. You know? oh yeah. Weird. Yeah. I or can't. even uh, Aronofsky it would have been a very different experience. Yeah. yeah. And confused. True. If you can imagine, it would have been darker. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if such a thing is possible. <laughs> uh, All righty. Yeah. Study. So, um, you guys ready to put this thing on the big board? Ready to rank it? Yeah. We got to get closer yeah. to the top now. We've been yeah, down cl- at the bottom for so long. Closer than we were with the spirit, for sure. Um, Fuck yeah. Um, so, all right. Here's our top ten, our current top ten. Um, do we think it belongs in the top ten? I could say it does, just I on do, the comic yeah. book adaptation. I think it's better than Hellboy 2. It's kind of where I was thinking. It's yeah. better than X2. Uh, I think it's better than Hellboy for different reasons, Hellboy was a lot of fun, but I, yeah, I think this, I could see that. Yeah, this is more of a film. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, what, that's my opinion. What are your thoughts, Al? Um, getting there. <clears throat> uh, let's see. <laughs> Did you hear that? He was getting there. <laughs> it's a day. Um, line, folks. Hell, uh, is it better than the Spider Man? I think it's. Better than Spider-Man 1, maybe, to me, but I, I love Spider-Man 2. It's got a place in my heart. I don't know if it's better than Spider-Man 1 to me. That, that's, that'd that's be a hard so, stretch. Well, yeah, that was my original is between Spider-Man and Hellboy. That looks like a looks like a good spot. Yeah, I can live with that. Brian, you good with that? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. You can live with that. Yeah. You're yeah. Be able to watch sleep me. tonight, throw. Fucking watch me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're putting the Watchmen on the list at number seven. There we go. That is our 81st uh, film in, in our uh, our uh, big, <laughs> big <laughs> whatever this is we're doing. Um, well, are we going to do another look back episode when we get to 100? I, I think hope. so. Yeah. I think yeah, we definitely cool. need to. Um, which means 82 is coming next week, and that's going to be Super Capers. <laughs> what? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm you. ready for it. Yeah, Super Capers is coming next week, guys. Um, will it make the top 10? Let's... It sounds like a producer's type situation. Like, quick, make a superhero movie. Make it terrible. <laughs> Right. Um, it well, sounds like a super lox bagel like team up. When are we gonna get papers? Like, <laughs> super salmon and was this the uh, the sequel the the <laughs> to Super Troopers? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, broken lizard. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, well, all right. I I will let. Yeah, you, that would fit. I will let you guys know this. Super capers. Um. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Super Capers um, has a six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So that's the lowest score we've ever had, right? Well, well I mean, unless we count um, Toxie Two, which had zero because it had no reviews. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that that doesn't count. Shame. I think. Yeah. This, I this is Toxie significantly two. lower. You're right. Toxie Two is the best it's one. A celebration yeah. of Japanese culture. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So funny. And I know it is. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Next week, Super Capers. Thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging with us this week on Harmless Phosphorescence. Um, this has been your host, Thoreau Smiley, reminding you that if you get a feeling of intense and crushing existential terror, it only means you're still sane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Josh Cece, and I've also been trapped in a revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brian Lesh, and I'm calling you from the room full of morons who thinks the world's problems are small enough to handle. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm Alaric Weber, and my superhero, my superpower, is wearing flashy outfits. <laughs> Kitty lasers. <laughs> Laser cats. Laser cats. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Andy.